Good morning and welcome to the Thursday, July 18, 2019 regular meeting of the school committee. At this time, I would invite those who are in attendance who would like to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance to please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. So we do have an opportunity for public comment here before we go into executive session, but I do not see any members of the public. So with that, I would request a motion to enter into executive session to comply with or act under the authority of MGL 30A, Section 21A2, for the purpose of discussing strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the custodians union, because having the discussion in an open meeting would have a detrimental effect on the school committee's bargaining position and then to reconvene an open session and then also to comply with and act under the authority of MGL specific to the review of executive session minutes for March 5, 2019, March 21st, 2019, May 2nd, 2019, May 7th, 2019, and May 16th, 2019. So I would seek that motion at this time. So moved. Motion by Meg, and is there a second? Second. A second by Jen, and we do require a roll call for this, so I'll start down there with you, Amanda. Aye. Meg. Uh, yes. Jen. I am a yes, and Mina. Aye. And that, that enters us into executive session at 10.06 a.m. And we will return back here when we are concluded for open session. Ready. Okay, so we have just returned from executive session uh, where we our business there and we're going to move now into reports and our first report up is the financial report with, with Ms. Rotherman. Thank you. Um, so as you know, this is the final report for fiscal 2019. Um, you can see that the uh, payroll and expense, the payroll came in with a positive variance of 120 and the expense came in at a negative variance of 120,000. I provided you with a memo that really went in detail um, for each of the categories that are spelled out on that first or second page, I guess. Um, no, first page. That uh, gives the details of the payroll account variances and the expense account variances. Um, in addition, if we can combine, you'll you also see that final year end transfer. Um, which enabled us to keep some money in the building revolving account as well as keep money in the circuit breaker account. Both will set us up in a better space going forward for our budgets um, in the utilization of those accounts. So I guess because that memo is so long, I wouldn't really get into the detail, but really just if you have questions. I just want to thank you for the, the memo. I think it was really um, clear and easy to read. I really appreciate the work to explain the, the numbers. So it's nice. Good. Yeah, Agree. It was. Like after I read for, it, I for some reason, I'm, I'm no sorry. Uh, for some reason, I'm not able to hear folks very clearly. Sorry, Mina, it was Amanda, and I just said that I really appreciated the time and effort to put together this detailed memo because it, I felt like I read it and I understood and it was clear mm -hmm. and it was nice. It was, yeah. it was um, very easy to digest the year end report. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Um, I don't know, Amanda, if you had any questions. I don't. So I felt the same way, and I felt like um, uh, the detail that's provided, the description that was provided, it was excellent. So thank you, um, Susan, for sharing that. Um, I do have a few questions uh, for you. One was around the total line item for the revolving funds. The question is how much um, of those monies will be carried over for next year? So those are school revolving funds. So the, the entire fund carries over. The entire balance carries over for next year. Okay. 
Um, the second question I have is, uh, you know, just looking at the over and under utilization, um, what one can notice that for the subs, uh, the budget to utilization seems to have increased across the schools from what was budgeted except the high school. Um, can you share, can you or Dr. Kavner share some detail around that? And uh, what is the hiring or assessment criteria for subs? Are we having them for extended periods? Does it have anything to do with the growth that we're having? So I'll, t I'll take a piece of it and Dr. Kavanaugh will take a piece of it. If you look at um, the historical actuals, the elementary sub budget has always gone over budget. So I believe if you probably back several years, that budget account was probably cut in an effort to balance the budget. The middle school and high school um, sub budgets are significantly higher than the elementary. Uh, so I think that was an area that probably was used previously to balance the budget because the actuals have always gone over. Um, so I think this is something that for fiscal year 21, uh, we definitely need to line up those accounts really to be more in, in line with um, what the actual history is. And again, you know, subs in terms of predicting on an annual basis is very difficult. You don't know if somebody is going to go out um, just for a short-term illness or a long-term, whether it is a maternity or any other um, issue that somebody would request a, a longer-term leave. So the exact prediction of how to do that uh, really doesn't exist. And looking at historical actuals, is really a better um, indicator. Okay. Yeah, I'll just talk a little bit about the hiring of subs. So we are constantly hiring subs in the district. Every couple of weeks, one of the administrators will sit and conduct substitute interviews. Um, it's, it's very difficult to find substitutes for our day-to-day -day classrooms, and it's especially difficult when you know, you're in a thriving economy. Uh, we pay about $85 a day. There's sort of a little formula that we use for that, uh, for day-to-day -day subs. And so what we try to calculate is what we call our fill rate. So we look across our schools and we try to say how many subs were we able to put into classrooms. We usually have a very good fill rate, somewhere between 90 and 100% all the time. Um, the high school obviously has a little more flexibility around subs, you know, so if a second grade teacher is going to be out, we have to have a sub for that classroom. Sometimes at the high school level, a teacher will forego a sub and just electronically have kids work on something, you know, in sort of a big common area setting, so. That's good. Yeah, and as Mrs. Rothermick said, it's really difficult to predict because, you know, you could have a teacher on the second day of school who breaks her leg, yeah. right, and mm -hmm. just absolutely unpredictable, so. Right. Thank you. Um, the other, uh, I, I have a few other questions. One is around the job postings that you mentioned. 144 job postings seems um, like a lot. Can you provide some background, some high-level breakdown around it, please? Sure. So I think um, I had answered that one uh, electronically. But I think what people right. sort of forget is that we are a very big institution and we employ an awful lot of people. So we would be hiring paraprofessionals, we hire custodians, we hire maintenance people, we hire tech people, we hire administrators, we hire teachers, we hire secretarial staff, and those people very frequently are coming and going. So while 140 people seems like an awful lot in a given school year, it's probably not as many people as you think. Um, when Kim Polnick does put out vacancy notices, you know, we all get them in our through our email, and we do see you know two or three of them a week on average. I would say. Okay. Mm, just two more questions. Uh, one around the grants. Um, it's great that to be able to see all the details around the grants that have been uh, that have come our yeah. way. Uh, I was wondering if there's any way to share what may have shifted year to year, whether it is an increase, a decrease, or something new that may have been done. Um, again, I know, Dr. Kavner, you shared some of this. If you don't mind sharing it for the benefit of everyone. Sure. So 
Uh, grants, I, I guess not dissimilar from some of these other categories, are a little bit unpredictable. Some years the Town of Hopkinton does get Title I money, some years we don't. It's really based on percentages of poverty levels. So for example, in FY18 we did not get Title I money, in FY19 we did get Title I money, in FY20... We're waiting with bated breath. <laughs> <laughs> It's not looking terribly positive. Mm. <laughs> so, but last year for the very first time we got Title III money, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Title III money helps our English language learners. Um, we always get Title II, and this year for FY20, for example, Mrs. Rothermick wrote a grant for school safety technology in the amount of 49000 and Mrs. Parson wrote one. Um, to sort of you know help kids learn um, in in different ways from what we've traditionally done in Hopkinton in the amount of fifteen thousand dollars, so grant money also becomes available through the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education based on sort of need throughout the out the state. So that's why those line items can be a little bit in flux. I don't sure. know if there's anything else you want thank to add because you. of the grant guru. Yeah, I think that you right. I, I just want to thank uh, Ms. Rothbank and also Ms. Parson for having done this work. Yes. Um, the last grant money is the, very helpful. Yes. Right. Right. And the last question I have is around the legal fees, uh, which seems to be shifting close to 100k, um, and you know it's about 35k over what was projected. So I was wondering if there are any measures we can take to contain this. Well, again, I would say that's one that's that's very hard for us to predict. So. Um, some years we will have a lot of public records requests. We'll be negotiating with the teachers and we use legal counsel to do that. Uh, sometimes we have you know, em employees with whom we are in litigation. Sometimes there are special education costs with litigation. Sometimes there's um, litigation that happens uh, between the school district and, and kids and families. So, I mean, Legacy Farms, I think, was an example that we used a lot of legal counsel to sort of help guide us through that process. So, I mean, I think it, it just depends on need in a given year and, you know, strange things happen. Um, again, I want to thank uh, both Ms. Rothamek and you, Dr. Kavanaugh, and whoever may have been involved in pulling this report together. As Amanda said earlier, it was, uh, you know, very readable, lots of detail, and, you know, uh, just looking through data and making sense of it was so much uh, easier. Thank you for doing such a great job with this year-end report. Well, that was all Mrs. Rothamek, so thank you. Okay, so if there are no more questions on that, I think we're ready to go into the superintendent's report. Sure. Great. My report is very brief today. Um, there we go. Whoopsie. A little excited. Uh, I just have a couple of things, so I don't know if you've been following this, but the athletic center at the high school um, finally got a brand new floor. And over the past 20 years, you know, they've suffered water damage at times. Um, so this is uh, just a photo of the floor. You can see it is gleaming. <laughs> if you have an opportunity to take a look at it, you should. It really looks beautiful. Um, right here, there probably are a couple more coats of poly that need to go on, but other than that, it's done and looking fantastic. So, yeah, so thanks really to you know, Tim Person for getting that all going. Uh, we also have a couple of pictures of the bus parking lot. Work is underway. Very exciting there, and uh, we anticipate that we'll be ready for the opening of school. Fantastic. That's, That's fast. Mm -hmm. it, it, now That's that great. looks like the grading has been fixed to bring that level with the road back there already have you seen it w when you look back there yeah when you looked. look at what the potential um final elevation yeah. there really is not a big grade difference That's um, there's more of a grade difference towards the middle <laughs> <laughs> you were warned and still it doesn't matter, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> there's more of a grade difference towards the middle school end and okay. less towards um the road Okay. Yeah. It's looking great. We'll have to check it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It's looking really the, a lot of progress. Uh, not related to the bus parking lot, but I would just update you that the calendar subcommittee met on Tuesday night. 
Um, and most of the folks on that committee have been to town hall to be sworn in. So I think we are alive and well. It's a very good committee. And I thought our meeting, and Jen, you were there, and Meg, you were as well. I thought it was a nice meeting. Yeah. It seems like a very good group to work with. So I'm excited about that. Uh, our policy working group met, and this is just uh, for me. I know that you were waiting to hear about any perspective changes to the naming policy, but I don't think that we are, are bringing anything forth right now. So, Thank you for sharing that, Dr. Kemmer. Yeah. And the last thing that I have for you, as always, is enrollment. This is enrollment on the screen. What you see is enrollment as of last Friday, but I did bring hard copies of this very morning. So, yes, you can take a look at that. <laughs> so, uh, five five <laughs> because it stayed Friday. level for two weeks, didn't it? At least, yeah. It went down. Yeah, it went down. <laughs> it did not go down. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what, what those columns are showing you is um, the current enrollment at a grade level, how many students have been approved, how many students have started the approval process in power school, so they're pending, and how many kids we know have um, exited. So there's a total now for each one of those grade levels. And you can see that we've put in Kiev Tech and Norfolk Aggie, uh, anybody who's out of our district at a charter school. Um, kids who are out of district at other schools, and um, the estimate for pre-K as well. Um, so there are some places that we are looking at now that might be an area of a concern. Grade 9. Um, Never had a class over 330 kids. No, it, it's, it's pretty much outrageous. I spoke with Mr. Bishop yesterday. He says, and yesterday we were at 331, by the way. Um, <laughs> but at 331, he felt like he had the staff and the space to be able to accommodate those students in his building. So that was encouraging. But we are going to watch that number because it's, it's very high. Uh, the other places that we're kind of watching, we're looking at grade four. Uh, even though five students have exited, you can see that there are 18 who are pending. Um, so we've really gone from like 269 to 282 there, which is um, an increase of 13 kids. Yeah. That's a little bit alarming, knowing where we try to keep our class sizes uh, relatively low. And then the, the final place, uh, the current the, the kids who are going to be going into first grade in August. So when we began school last year, as a kindergarten class, they were at 264. They ended school at 273, and now they have grown to 282 for, their, for starting um, kindergarten, I mean first grade. So those are the places that we're keeping a very close eye on. And I will be keeping this group and other groups up to date as, as enrollment changes. So I, I guess our net increase for the right now is at 104 students. Can I ask a question, Dr. Cavanaugh? So we're up to 332 for ninth grade. What is the panic number? When Mr. Bishop um, says we need more room. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's 330. Okay. Um, I think that we may not have a particular number per se, but I think we're going to get to a place where we say, all right, so now we look at all of the grade nine English classes. For example, every student has to take English, and we say that those classes are just too big. So say grade nine honors English classes hit 28. At that point, we might have to say, you know what, it's time to create another section. We might need point two of an English teacher. Okay. So I feel like what's gonna happen at the high school level is going to be point two, point four in okay. different disciplines. That's typically how those those things grow at that level. Okay. So kind of following along that and looking at what we did last year with regard to hiring additional staff, yes. we're next scheduled to meet on August either 15th or 18th. Mm -hmm. My guess is that's going to be too late to add staffing. If we need to add staff, we will have to do it on the 15th, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, for it to be, be in place for the start of school. Would it be something where it would be beneficial to have the school committee convene ahead of that meeting, even just for that one issue to allow the staffing to be in place? I mean, would they be able to be in place for the start of school if we did it on August 15th? 
Right. Or do we That's really need it ahead of time? Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. I see what you're saying. So um, I mean, that'd be a rapid posting and rapid hiring process. It really would be, yes. Um, I guess I guess what I would say to that is, and, and the thing about the high school is you do have a little bit of flexibility in that you have like subject matter leaders and, you know, that could be in a classroom, say. To hold it in the beginning. Yes, for a few days, yeah. Um, but I would say that in the event that we need that, maybe we do have to have a special like school an emergency committee meeting. special. Yeah. Prior to the 15th, absolutely. Yeah. That yeah, that's sense. a great point. Yeah. Better to have them in place in time. Yes. Yeah, I, I guess. Sorry. Go ahead, Mina. Um, I get. I guess no matter what, it's not an easy situation. On one side, you have to wait for those enrollment numbers or kind of have mm -hmm. some idea which way the trend is going. I mean, if you have some pending, you kind of have a sense, mm -hmm. right? And from that to making a decision and posting and whatnot. So I think, uh, Nancy, you highlighting that out makes absolute sense. And the fact that if it's needed, uh, we will be available to do it sooner rather than later. Because uh, we, do, we want the impact ultimately um, to the students and even the staff um, to be lesser. So we'll be there. That's great. Yeah, so we'll keep watching, and if we need a meeting before the 15th, we will make that happen. Okay. Yep. It's just remarkable how... Um, Do Dr. Kamna, I just had one comment. Uh, you know, certainly the ninth grade was something I was looking at, but even overall, if you look at it, we are 120 short of 4,000 mm -hmm. kids, right? Yeah, 800. I guess 108. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little less than that. Maybe. Kids for whom we are responsible, yes, right. Yes. Right. I mean, even so though we're I'm, not I'm sort just of teaching. wondering, um, you know, are there any thresholds? We've talked about this a little bit in a couple of past meetings. Um, would that trigger any kind of um, additional things that we may have to consider? Uh, hopefully not this year, uh, but just putting it out there for your consideration. Right. I think. Going forward in the next couple of years, I, I think our big concern is going to be our physical plant. How much space do we have in which to educate our kids? Mm. Absolutely. Thank you. And the, and the high school athletic center floors look fabulous. <laughs> so great job to uh, Mr. Parson and the entire team that worked on it. Yes. Yeah. Amanda, did you have something? Just a comment. I mean, I feel like when we, um, when I joined this town, you know, the average was kind of hovering around 250 per yeah. class, and all yeah. of a sudden, like you just look down the line, and we're, we're the average is like 300, we're approaching 300 per class. I just worry about the. I'm very eager for the capacity study. Yeah. Yes. I worry about that both the middle and high school, and Hopkins. I mean, schools where we have team structures, you know. It, it, things like that, and, and just like the number of bodies in the schools um, is definitely concerning. And mm -hmm. I'm sure transportation and cafeteria, yes. I mean, all the services yes. that support them, so. Yeah. Go capacity study. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think you do make a good point about transportation, about cafeteria, all of those other things yeah. that are sort of out there, but we don't necessarily put those in, in the forefront of our thinking. Yeah. Am, am I correct in recalling that as of the opening of school last year, we had about 37.21 for enrollment. Yes, That's, that is correct, yes. So it seems almost certain that in another year we'll be over 4,000, if not sooner. Yes, yeah. and yes, and yeah. when we, I think last year when we used the number 37.21, we probably did not have the Keefe Tech and the Norfolk okay. kids in there, but okay. you know, just for, just because as Georgette and Linda Henderson are keeping these numbers, yeah. you know, they, they keep all the categories, so. Is there a chance for us, perhaps, this fall, once school is in session again, to tour the different buildings to see what it is like? I would think so. How oh. crowded the classrooms are, how crowded, the, just to get a sense if yep. my colleagues here yeah. would be amenable to that. That's a nice idea. Well, yeah, as, as the population is growing, it, I think it'd probably it, behoove us to have a, us. a real sense right. of the feel of it. Mm. Nice idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that, that's all I have. Okay, so that moves us into the school committee chair report. Uh, and in 
Mina's physical absence, I have continued to sign the payroll and uh, other warrants on her behalf, and I have approved the payroll warrants S19026, S19BAL, and S2001. The payroll warrants have been included in your packet. I have approved warrants 19-104, 19-105, 19-106, 19-107, 19-108, 19-109, 19-110, 19-111, 19-112, 19-113, 19-114, 19-115, 19-116, 19-117, 19-118, 19-119, 19-120, 19-121, 19-122, 19-123, 19-124, 19-125, 19-126, 19-127, 19-128, 19-129, 19-130, 19-131, 19-132, 19-133, 19-134, 19-135, 19-136, 19-137, 19-138, 19-139, 19-140, 19-141, 19-142, 19-143, 19-144, 19-145, 19-146, 19-147, 19-148, 19-149, 19-150, 19-151, 19-152, 19-153, 19-154, 19-155, 19-156, 19-157, 19-158, 19-159, 19-160, 19-171, 19-172, 19-173, 19-174, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175, 19-175
I mean, I would partner with you, and I'd also ask, do you want us to think about goals on our own and come with our own ideas to, to the collective meeting? Is that another way to partner? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Um, a couple of um, updates on correspondence um, that I received. Um, there's a request from a community member to name a facility in Elmwood. So I was waiting for the update on pro, uh, the procedure and the next steps. Dr. Kavanaugh shared some updates with regard to the, po uh, you know, what the policy working group did. So I'll be sending a communication back to that member. Um, the other one was related to a fundraising effort, which is underway related to field number six. The group involved shared some information related to the same. Um, so that's all I have for updates uh, with regard to the chair report. Thank you, Nancy. So do people have liaison reports? Some right now it's a little bit slower sometimes. So really? our, our policy working group met, but it was largely surrounding that naming policy. So we did some work on it, but it's not ready to so rock yet. Will that come forward in the fall then? Uh, yeah, probably. I, don't, I can't give you a no, I don't mean an exact date, but I just it is coming forward with suggestions in the next few in, months. Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Pending. Yeah. Okay. That's great. I I had one which was that I've been working with the bridge subcommittee on getting some in project just because who has agreed to help the schools to fill unmet needs for students uh, with regard to school supplies and they're getting things collected now for all of our grades, which is really great in everything from the calculators to crayons and markers and everything in between. So there will be more. And I have sent that out to the schools to, so that they are aware of it as well. Uh, and then also with regard to snacks and other things that Project Just Because can help us with. So that feels very positive. Okay. Uh, Nancy, I have one small one. Sorry, did go someone ahead. No, else want to speak? No, I think it's all you. Um, just a small update on the tech front. I know we are going to be discussing who it will be next, uh, but I was in touch with the executive director um, to kind of ask about any training opportunities that may be available and open to school committee members, mostly around innovative programs in any area, whether it is special needs or um, any other area. Uh, because they do conduct a lot of training. And so uh, Dr. McGonagall uh, said that she would look at um, the suggestions made and keep us posted. And of course, if other members have any ideas, you know, maybe we need to talk a little bit about what tech does so folks have a better idea to see if we can utilize some of the resources that are available through tech. I, I think it's a fabulous resource. Thank you. So that moves us then into new business. And item A is the vote to ratify the custodian's memorandum of understanding. And as everybody at the table knows, we did discuss the MOU in our executive session. We are required to repeat our vote in a public session. I don't know, um, Ms. Rothermack, if you wanted to say anything about that before we do so. No, if you are all set. Okay. I am all set, so I would seek then a motion to approve the, uh, ratify the custodian's memorandum of understanding for July 1, 2019 through and including June 30th, 2022. So moved. It's a motion by Meg, second. second by Amanda, and we'll do a roll call vote, and I'll start with you, Meg. Aye. Amanda. Aye. Jen. Yes. I am a yes. And Mina? Aye. Okay, so that passes five to nothing. So that moves us then into item B, which is the middle school gift account. And Dr. Kavanaugh, I have you up for that. Okay. So um, as you know, we always uh, approve gifts that come in to our schools. This one is going to the middle school desire to inspire program. So I am seeking your um, approval for a $750 check from the Benevity Community Impact Fund for the middle school. So moved. Motion by Meg. Second. Second by Amanda. Roll call with you, Meg. Aye. Amanda. Aye. Jen. Yes. I am a yes. And Mina? Yes. Okay, so that passes, and that moves us into the Hopkins School gift account. Also you, Dr. Kavanaugh. Okay. 
Um, so at Hopkins School, um, there are those programs where kids can create art and families will buy products containing their kids' arts, and Artsony is one of them. Uh, we are looking for you to accept $645.87 from Artsony to be put into the Hopkins School gift account. So moved. Second. Motion by Meg, second by Amanda. A roll call starting with you, Meg. Aye. Amanda. Aye. Jen. Yes. I am a yes. And Mina? Aye. Okay, so that passes five to nothing. And that then brings us into item D, which is uh, B paraprofessionals for Elmwood and Hopkins. Dr. Kavanaugh. Sure. So you know that I had also shared this information uh, with you in a memo. Um, what I am looking for uh, are two para B paraprofessionals for Elmwood and one B paraprofessional for Hopkins. Uh, so the Elmwood School this year had worked with a consultant and we thought about the ways in which we are currently structuring our co-taught classrooms. And what will be happening with some of those classrooms in the fall is that we will have one special educator shared across two classrooms. Um, it's, that's sort of advantageous in the sense that we can set that up for profile of child. We can take a look at how uh, we are grouping kids so that you can pull kids from two different classrooms and you know have them you know have reading instruction or math support or those kinds of things. Um, but what we're also looking for is to be able to have a couple of paraprofessionals to also assist in those classrooms at times when, say for example, the special educator is worth working with classroom A, the paraprofessional would be working with class, classroom B. Um, and so you can see that the cost for that is, oops, it's on the memo, so I apologize for that. Let me scoot right across to that for you. The cost for that is $23,545 per pair, which is $70,635. Uh, we are hoping to be able to use some of the appropriated money from Legacy Farms if we need to, but um, because we have thought about those monies as being you know, somewhat sacred, um, if through personnel attrition or salary reserve, you know, some other funding becomes available, we would use that before we would use the Legacy Farms money. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. The more adults you can get, especially if the class sizes are starting to creep up, the more adults and in the classroom is, yeah. is the way to go. Okay, then if there are not any questions, I would seek a motion to approve the B pair professionals for Elmwood and uh, Hopkins. So moved. Motion by Second. Meg. Second by Amanda. Roll call starting with you, Meg. Aye. Amanda. Aye. Jen. Yes. I am a yes. And Mina. Aye. Okay, so that Thank passes that. five to nothing. Sure. It'll and be great for kids. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's great. Mm. Thank you. So that brings us into the superintendent goals for FY20. All right. So I've also shared that document with you. And just to be very clear, these are in draft state right now. Um, so I do, in fact, invite your feedback. Uh, this year I have four goals here. Uh, the first one is a district improvement goal and it is directly related to enrollment growth and it focuses on our school facilities. What I hope to do is to be able to look at our buildings, see where we need to generate more space, whether that is through renovation, addition, um, whether that might even mean using portable classrooms in particular places. Um, but by the end of the the budgeting process i think that we will need to be able to bring something to the community and to annual town meeting um, that takes a very careful look at our capital budget relative to physical space um, so you can see that i've included all of those process benchmarks and product benchmarks as we go i've tied it to the superintendent's rubric um, specifically um, to e1 fiscal systems and based on our current strategic objective document, it is uh, aligned under our plan for enrollment growth, metrics for success. Specifically, it's aligned to bullet four, our plan for human resource facility and equipment needs. Um, some of the resources that we have currently, we have an SOI in with the MSBA for the Elmwood School. 
Uh, we have an architectural firm taking a look at um, projected costs to add those classrooms on that wing at the high school that you know sort of wasn't developed when the high school was built. We were approved at town meeting for $50,000 to conduct a capacity study. And currently we are doing uh, renovations to the White House. Uh, and those are being done entirely through donation. Um, and so we're excited to get the interior of that building up and running for our 18 to 22 program. So I don't know if you would like to go goal by goal and have questions or just I could read them off and then we'll have questions. Seem easier to go goal by yeah. goal. Might as well. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have questions or comments on goal number one? I think it's, I like that, especially in light of the most recent enrollment numbers, I think that this is, is, an, is a great goal because we do need to figure out what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And so to make it one of your goals, it's going to happen, which is great. You know, it's not just something we continue to talk about. There'll be action. So I think that's, um, so it makes a lot of sense. And the things that you've already put in motion are fantastic, but, you know, once that number hits 4,000, we're going to need to have some places to put physical space to put kids. Yes, we are. It would be great if we could be outside. <laughs> January would be tricky. So, January you know, would yeah, be very tricky. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And I, I think that it's, um, you know, I, you have to tie it to the superintendent rubric, but it makes perfect sense the way you tied it in. So I think this is a, um, a good way to start it off. I agree. I think the community is really feeling a little bit of unease with the the growth, and I think this will help for people to have a pathway for how we're going to move forward and how we're going to be able to be proactive and to embrace the growth that we have in a way that is beneficial for all of our schools. So that, and I just also really want to underline how um, enthusiastic I am for the White House project that you have undertaken uh, and your ability to bring in resources that are not um, at cost for our budget is tremendous and much needed for the 18 to 22 population. I've heard a lot well. of people talking about it. Yeah. Just it, it's, it's, yeah, it's, in the community, people it, are talking about it. Yeah. We'll allow for some great programmatic changes that you have talked about uh, in the past. So I am excited for that. Yeah. And I could not do this without Tim Person so, and Susan Rodnick. So thank you to that whole group in our organization. And you, you mentioned uh, that you're Dr. going Dr. Kavanaugh, oh. sorry, Meg, you were saying something. Please go ahead. Thank you, Mina. Uh, you mentioned that you're going to explore grant funding for the exterior renovation of the White House. So I do have that in here. We'll see if that will work. If that doesn't work, we are probably going to need to go to the community and talk about a capital expenditure to do okay. the exterior of that building. Yeah. Um, one of the things that Mrs. Rothermick, Mr. Person and I did, we went to the basement of that building and it's very interesting in there, the foundation is built on great big timbers. So it's like trees that are holding up, right. I mean, for lack of a, a better term, right. holding up. So I'm, um, you know, for as many times as we've heard, is it on the historic register? No, it's not. Is it considered a historic building? Um, I do think that because of the structure of the building, it does have you know some significance, I think, in the community. So at that point, I think the community is going to have to make a decision about restoring the exterior. If you look at things like the fascia boards, they are entirely rotted out. Um, if you go into the attic portion of that and look up, it's like Van Gogh's Starry Night. You can see outside. Right. So, so there is an awful lot of like real construction to be done on that building. Um, will any of the interior renovation be threatened by the state of the exterior? Because I know that there are great Arctic gusts blasting through that building in the winter. I, I don't think that the interior renovation is going to be impacted by it, okay. but you can probably speak better. Yeah, no, I mean, we would have known that because we've had people working in that building for years. Yeah. Uh, so there has not been complaints of water coming in through the windows as a, for instance, People are on that upstairs right underneath the attic. So while um, you do see stars, um, that section of the roof is over storage. So it, at this point in time, we don't see okay. you know, water damage coming in. Might it be chilly in some sections? It might be chilly in some sections. Um, but that's easy enough to add additional storm windows, which I believe there may be. Um, you know, the old houses, they typically had those storm windows that hang on hooks and right. clip in. So, right. um, 
like I said, for the people who have been working in this in the building for many years, um, the conditions have been have been fine. That's great. So. Thank you, and thank you for undertaking this. It's very exciting. Um, Dr. Kavanaugh, as I shared um, a little bit uh, earlier with you, my only suggestion on this particular goal is related to um, staffing. Yes, and, and so I think, you know, I'm happy to add the staffing piece, but the staffing piece, I think, is just going to come sort of naturally because, you know, as um, when Mrs. Tyler asked before about um, what happens, like where is that pressure point for, you know, adding additional faculty at the high school, for example, I think that that will just continue to happen all along this year as it did last year. I mean, if you are all the same committee from FY19 I'm moving into FY20. And so I think you're no stranger to the idea that we are constantly coming to you asking for, can I have a half of a math teacher? Can I have a third grade teacher? Can I have three paraprofessionals? So I'm happy to ask, add that piece, um, Mina, if you would like for me to do that. That's my uh, view, of course, as the entire committee, uh, for, for everyone to think of it. I guess to me, it's about the vision, the, you know, all the work around the facilities, the growth. And so to me, the staffing um, goes hand in hand with it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Along those lines, go ahead, actually, Amanda, you haven't spoken yet. Go ahead. Okay. No, I mean, my, um, I had asked to um, take a look at the RFP of this, just to get a sense of what the scope of what we're asking for was, um, specifically on the study, because yes. I think I'm 1,000% behind this goal. I think it's um, excellent and urgent, so this year for me is the right year. Um, my, my only concern, kind of as I alluded to before, is um, does it include the non-classroom space in the schools, like just managing the human traffic and human movement within the schools just because mm -hmm. at each school we were now you know significantly as a school population larger than we were before so I and I it seemed like it was um, addressing the related art spaces and and so forth and I would just ask to um, keep an eye toward just general crowdedness you mean like cafeterias hallways and hallways stuff. cafeterias yeah. um, study halls um, you know, even um, to some degree after school programming spaces that we use, and especially in the middle school and high school, where we are trying to encourage a rich extracurricular program, um, and we have lots of things going on, but do we have places to put people? Like, you know, do we, if, we have, if we add a new course, if we now have a new glee club or something. Right. I mean, obviously we're going to have to make some choices, but um, to what degree can our space accommodate, not just classroom? So... Good call. Mm -hmm. And that's a good, what I was going to add, and it's sort of along those same lines, is this is definitely um, a more proactive approach to what we know is coming. I think with staffing, um, we know it's coming too, but I think we have to be almost reactive in the staffing arena because it, we have that sort of fiduciary responsibility to budget mm -hmm. the number of teachers. And so when we need more, we need more, but we can't necessarily say next year we think we're going to need 15 new teachers, we just don't know based on, on the student population. But this is a proactive goal in that we know we're growing, we know our buildings are going to be bursting at the seams soon, so we know we need physical space for students and staff and, and all the other human traffic in the building. Um, so I, you know, I appreciate the proactiveness of it, but also, um, you know, to Mina's point, for sure, <laughs> staffing is critical, but it, I feel like they might be two separate things because mm -hmm. this, we know we're growing, we're gonna need it. Staffing, we know we're growing, but we don't know when we're gonna necessarily need those those teachers and, and paraprofessionals. I think the other thing for me that, that makes buildings just a little different from staffing is that if you decide that you need 0.6 of a math teacher, you post the position and in a month's time you have 0.6 of a math teacher right. in a classroom. But if you decide you need four high school classrooms, it can be two years from right, the time right. you know you have an architect look at the project to having kids actually in the building. If you're thinking about an SOI through MSBA, it can be five years from the day you submit to the day kids walk in. So yeah. it's just one more, right? One more. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe ten. <Yeah. laughs> 
So that makes sense to me. Yeah. Anything else on uh, goal number one? Then we're ready to move into goal number two. All right, so goal number two is sort of a carryover from last year. Um, this is not only a district improvement goal, but also a professional practice goal. Uh, the goal s states understanding that staff growth in areas of diversity, sensitivity, equity, and inclusivity can't be fostered by professional development alone. So I would like to continue sort of that gra some of the grassroots methods to build the repertoires of our administrators, faculty, and staff with the hopes of ensuring greater social and psychological safety for all students. Um, I don't want you to think that I'm not looking to bring in someone to do some kind of training with our staff, um, but as Jen has done really most of the legwork on this and as she has reached out to different presenters, uh, maybe just because of the demand for diversity training in districts everywhere. It's been a little bit tricky to find someone who has sort of the dates and availability for the 1920 school year. Um, but the other piece is that, and you know, maybe Jen can speak to this a little bit, that as we've looked at you know, the cost for some of the folks that we've reached out to, some people want you know, $9,000 to come in for 90 minutes. So, you know. Or 20000 or twenty thousand dollars to come in for ninety minutes, and one of the things that we know about professional learning is it really has to sort of be ongoing um, in an effort to uh, really have some kind of an impact. You know, if you attend something for ninety minutes, it may help you to become a little bit more aware of your unconscious biases. If you attend something, you may walk away like very pumped for you know the learning that's just happened, but it, without that, you know sort of recursivity of the learning um, it, it just it kind of fades from us so uh, you can see that I do have some process benchmarks there uh, Jen had recommended a text we got this uh, equity access and the quest to be who our students need to be so one of the things that I think we're doing this year is taking the focus from just working with the 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 people, the adults in our school, and thinking more about the relationships between the adults and the kids. And I would really like to have some kind of plan in place for us to begin the interrogation of our curriculum as well. And that's something that we heard at the focus groups. When we had people there, they they wondered about you know our curriculum, how we do, deliver our curriculum. Is it done through a very largely Eurocentric kind of lens? And so you know that that may be something we can start to slice away with at you know, chip away at, I guess, during this year, and then maybe have some kind of a very concrete plan in place for looking at that. Yesterday, I talked to Mr. Bishop a little bit about that. He feels like, you know, his teachers now are getting all their curricula in place to be launched on the new website, and he certainly thinks that that's, you know, something that could be happening at the high school. Um, and, you know, if not the second half of this year, certainly the following year. Um, but he's got a retreat planned for Monday and Tuesday and is going to run it by his subject matter leader. So I think that's that's pretty positive. Uh, you can see again it's tied to the superintendent's rubric, um, namely standard three, culturally proficient communication and standard four, professional culture policies and practices. It's tied to our current strategic objective. It's aligned under build school communities of collaboration in the category of diversity, create inclusive cultures that celebrate diversity and backgrounds and build relationships across race, class, gender, and learning abilities to create caring learning communities. You can see the resources that we have there. Um, not only will we be using that text throughout the year, but um, I'll be attending vision trainings, and uh, Jen and I had a professional workshop with Dr. Adolph Brown. She's since reached out to him. Um, he's very expensive, but very wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it would be really good if we could get him to come to Hopkinton. We're not sure that that will happen. Um, but I think that this sort of is an extension of you know the ADL work that we had done last year and some of the other things that we had done as an admin team. I'm very excited about this goal in particular. I like the idea of the curriculum interrogation plan, mm -hmm. only because I've learned very much recently about doing the same with the curriculum we teach, um, and trying to locate texts that reflect the cultural backgrounds of the students more completely, so they can bring more of their knowledge into the classroom has been a, a great benefit. So this is gonna be great, thank you. 
Yeah, I'm also really um, in support of this, as well as the curriculum interrogation plan. I think that will be a really great output of this work for um, to help us really look at what we're doing, and not just in text, but music and art and um, mm -hmm. and even wellness. I mean, are we playing cricket? Are we trying new sports? Are we, you know, what are we doing? Are we looking at other artists from around the world and so forth? So That's great. Too. I am, I'm excited. I think this is the right direction to go in. So good. Yeah. I mean. Yes, right. I mean, <laughs> and, and it makes sense. I think sometimes it's tricky when you pull on goal from the previous year. Folks are like, didn't you have that goal last year? But it, this is one that has to be, I feel like you could just yes. keep it yep. right. forever. Yeah. It it takes time. Right. It's just one of those things that you sh we need to, as your goal, yes, you, but everybody we sh needs to constantly think about what we're doing, what we're teaching, and, and how, um, how it's connecting with the kids that are sitting in the classroom. So mm -hmm. I think it, it makes a lot of sense. It's good. I agree. Brings it to the next level. Yep. Nina? I have, yes, I, I do have uh, one suggestion, and I do, um, I'm, I'm excited to see the intent behind doing all of this work and how important it is. It's so directly aligned with the strategic plan. Um, and so I'm excited to see all uh, the work that Dr. Kavanaugh has planned with. Uh, uh, Miss Person and uh, so Parson, sorry. And so my uh, only suggestion is related to the evidence. Um, what I would want to see is what is the impact of all of this work to students? And so, you know, we had done a baseline survey uh, last summer. So I, I would like to understand how is it that we can measure that the work that is being done last year and then going into this year, what is the impact to students at the end of the day as a result of this? So some form of measurement on the impact to students is what I would like to see in the evidence. If Dr. Kavanaugh, you can think about some ideas um, of what those evidence could be, whether it is a survey or a series of surveys or some other ways, uh, I think that will be very helpful. All right, yeah, I, and I guess, you know, just to be clear about last year's survey, I think we had all agreed that that was not a baseline survey. Um, right. But, but I think it did give us information about some starting points for us as an admin team. Um, I will think about how to sort of measure the success of this, but I think when, when we look at surveys that involve, you know, students or faculty, sometimes because it's sort of a self-assessment, I think there are some people who are, you know, very well versed in issues around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And maybe sometimes because they are so knowledgeable, they don't give themselves credit for the knowledge that they have. And sometimes there are people who are not aware of their unconscious biases and would rate themselves very high. So I'm certainly not averse to a survey. I'm just not sure of the accuracy of the measurement, but I'm, I'm happy to do it. That, that's fair, Dr. Kavno, and that's where I'm saying if you can think of those measurement tools which are able to show us the shift in student experience um, and, the, you know, the, the culture within the schools, the shift, the reason for all of this work ultimately is towards that. So if there's a way that you can think of what that tool is, whatever that might be, I think that will help. So can I ask just a, a clarification? on? For you, Mina, just to, because I, I agree that a survey could be problematic in terms of how at, what it actually tells us, particularly since we don't have real baseline data from last year to compare it to. But would you see things such as, um, you know, looking at some of the texts that are brought in, looking at some of the, um, if there are different artists and things like that as evidence? Because surely that would impact student experience if they see more of a, a cultural diversity in it or are you looking for something like a like a number like an x percent of kids kind of a thing um i would like to i, I myself would like to think about this a okay. little bit more look to see what others may have done on this path who are ahead of us mm -hmm. uh, and uh, perhaps look to you know what is a reasonable measure I, I like the idea mina of I, mean, I, I agree 100% with Dr. Kavanaugh that last year's survey was a take the temperature survey, not a baseline survey. So I think measurement would have to start, we'd have to 
if this is something we want to do, which I kind of like the idea of measuring student comfort and, and safety and feeling of belonging and whatnot, um, I think we'd have to think about it and design it. Um, and I guess I'm, I'll just throw this as you're thinking about it, Dr. Kavanaugh. I think when we were at the MASC, MASS conference last year, one of the sessions was um, a vendor who provided um, social emotional surveying, and I think Framingham was using them. I'm wondering, they, they had offered their catalog of questions free. Mm. It was Framingham. And I'm wondering if we could circle back to their catalog of questions and see if they have um, a category on diversity and inclusion and belonging, you know, as, as a measure <laughs> of SEL, because it, we could maybe piggyback, and if we could come up with like a three to five question survey that we kind of just do on a regular basis that's not too, too ponderous, we might be able to get some insight. Yeah, I think that group is Panorama. Okay. Um, and I think currently, Mr. Bishop does put out a survey to kids each year asking them about sort of those levels of comfort, but maybe we could share some of those questions with him. Yeah. yeah. From Panorama. Yeah, so I, haven't, I haven't, have you looked at their question database at all? I haven't looked. I sure. did look at I the high not. school one. Oh, you mean panoramas? Yeah. No, I did not. No. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen the results of the high school mm -hmm. survey, but I, I think it's a good idea, Nina. Right though, now. something to think about. Yeah. Is there anything in the Metro West Health Survey about that kind of information? Yeah, there I, is. I feel like there already may be existing That's data. Great. Yes. That I think that was included in this year's. I, I think it was too. Survey. So yeah. it, we may have that info, and we just don't even know we have it. We do have some yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. We wouldn't get to the younger kids. No. You're right, yeah. but it, we wouldn't have, have a uniform tool that we could use for all kids, I think, if no. you're talking to the littles, you know, you have to have a different, yeah. so, it, yeah. The only thing, if I could add, um, thinking about this goal area in terms of how we might want to measure it, I see this as something in terms of impact on students that would, would be measurable over a length of time that would include more than one school year. Absolutely. So we're really yes. in the infancy yes. of how are we going to do something that will have a demonstrable impact on students, we will not see a lot of that until June, uh, by this coming June. So when we think about a superintendent's goal, if it's a one-year goal that she, or me, because I see myself as a lot of this, <laughs> is measured on in a year's time, I don't think we'll see that. But I think what we will see, I think kind of to your point, Nancy, is introduction of new materials, which are things that we've already started on working or having teachers really look at when we move into the next two stages of curriculum development. Mm -hmm. How do we now go back through that and assess materials and authors and artists and all those things, um, that will take some time to have a measurable impact. To change um, the climate, yes. I would think, would take sustained effort over yes. a number of years Sure. Yeah. to get it. But, yeah. but if we put something in place, I mean, how interesting would it be five years from now yes. to look back and yes. see, yes. I mean, even though, it, not within the context of your goal, but, you know, to, right. to check you out, you know, but more putting something in place so that we can actually see if we move the needle over mm -hmm. five yes, years. Yeah. And I think um, there's a wonderful curriculum with which you're probably familiar called Teaching Tolerance. And I think the way they measure success in those programs is over a longer period of time. And they take a look at both students and teachers' reflections. So they'll have the student, for example, write something about their sense of identity at the beginning of the year and how that shifted by the end of the year. So I'm not sure a survey would even capture that kind of intellectual and emotional growth. I think um, some written or even you know, videoing the younger kids is a way to capture it. Mm -hmm. But this is great. You know, it's all good and it does take time to measure, for sure. All right. Then I guess uh, if there's no more on goal number two, we're ready to go into goal number three. Okay, goal number three is a professional practice goal. Um, I'm hoping to grow my communication between sort of families and this community and elected officials over the next year. Um, and again, you can see I have process and product benchmarks there. Um, I think I, I started with uh, my first year last year, you know, with, with some good community engagement, but I think that there are other ways that I could reach out to the community. I know that I attended a lot of sort of singleton events and dealt with parents on individual basement bases, but you know, to sort of reach out to all families with more frequency, I think would be helpful. 
Uh, so you can see that it's tied to at least three um, places uh, understand the three of the superintendent's rubric, um, community and business engagement, culturally proficient communication, and family concerns. And then it's tied to our current strategic objective uh, under build school communities of collaboration, community and stakeholder partnerships, grow partnerships between families and schools, and also aligned under the plan for enrollment gro growth, community and stakeholder partnerships build impactful and engaging communications and partnerships with elected officials. So it does feel like the strategic objective document as well as the superintendent rubric um, sort of put a lot of emphasis on on this kind of work and I think that it's it is a place where I could personally grow and professionally grow okay. any questions or comments I have no comments on this one I love the blog. I was going to say that. Too. I love the blog. I hope that people well, find one it <laughs> and read it as it comes out. I think um, I have learned a lot through through you from your voice and your experience and in and, and communication that I often wish people could hear. So yeah. I'm excited that there's a medium, at least for you to, on a periodic basis, share some reflections um, on things that are happening in the world or of education or child rearing, whatever. Um, I had also. You know, this is maybe for us, Mina, for our discussion on our goals. I, I have a little feeling that maybe there's an opportunity for a joint goal with school committee here. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that that's ever done, and I don't even know what that looks like, but I feel like in the one space where school committee operates, it's in connecting with the community. And mm -hmm. I don't know if, I don't know, I just throw that out there for thinking, as people are thinking about our own goals, how can we dovetail into this or play off of this or what? I don't know. Uh, Amanda, I'm actually having a hard time hearing you. Um, did I hear this right that you're talking about, uh, you know, some form of communication with the school committee? I was just suggesting that maybe this isn't I don't know. Sure. We've never done goals before, so I was thinking that maybe this is an opportunity for school committee to think about maybe a joint goal with the superintendent around communication. I don't even know right. what that looks like, but I just had that feeling and I thought I'd share. <laughs> right. Um, I, I personally think that's a great idea. First of all, I really like that you know there's going to be a blog and. I love the way Dr. Kavanaugh writes. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's one of her biggest strengths. And I'm looking forward to this blog and reading it and learning from it. And I'm hopeful that a lot of people in the community, students and parents, um, are going to benefit from this effort that Dr. Kavanaugh is making. And, and to your point, um, uh, Amanda, I think if we can have some kind of a uh, um, you know, uh, detail around all the key decisions that have been made through the school committee meetings. Uh, I think even uh, some kind of uh, information around that would help. And in fact, shared something around that. And Dr. Kavno, uh, do you want to speak to that a little bit? About, I'm sorry, say that again. Um, we exchanged some emails around uh, possibly sharing some of the decisions that are being made at the school committee meetings and sharing that with the community in a regular basis. Oh, do you mean reports? Yes. Okay. Yep. I, so I recall. Um, yeah. So we did have a conversation about bringing more reports to this body, and I think that you know maybe that would have to come from sort of your interests as well as things that we as a school department think are important to sort of share with the community. So for example, um, I know that, you know, in the past we've had conversations about should we have a presentation that shows, you know, sort of the growth and achievement of students on IEPs? Should mm -hmm. we, you know, have th that sort of very traditional MCAS kind of a presentation that Mrs. Parson would do annually? Or are there other aspects of sort of standardized testing or MCAS that, you know, as a school committee you would be interested in? Um, so that's that's kind of where we went. And I think this morning you and I, you know, we talked a little bit also about um, the presentations that our department heads make in art and music. And are there other aspects of those two disciplines, K to 12, that would be of great interest to this committee, as opposed to sort of that very standard, this is you know, how many concerts we did, this is how many kids won gold key awards. Um, but are there other other things that would be also of genuine interest to you? So, 
Right. Um, and, and Dr. Kaptner, we also talked about that, you know, possibly a bi-weekly email notification or some form of notification that talks to the key decisions. I think you mentioned uh, Joe Sawyer. Yes, so I live in Shrewsbury, and each time there's a school committee meeting, we get an email from the superintendent that will say, um, tonight there's a school committee meeting, it's starting at 7 o'clock, it's going to be held here, and these are all of the things that will be decided upon at tonight's meeting, which I do think is kind of nice just yeah. to make the community aware of mm -hmm. you know, what, what kind of activity might be happening at a school committee meeting. So I would be more than great. happy to add that to this list. I think it's great. I think that's a great idea. And Georgette and I could do that lickety split. Fantastic. Yeah, that would be great. great. And yeah. I think we have a sample also from the Walsley um, School District around some communication so perhaps some samples to look at and i'm sure you'll uh, put your own signature to it sure okay then are we in the interest of time ready to move on to poll number four yes yes we are okay all right so this one is a, a student achievement goal uh, last year you'll remember that we took a look at um some of the uh, some of our more struggling learners would be taking the grade 10 MCAS um, for the very first time uh, the MCAS 2.0 and so that was a very specific student achievement goal this year I'm I'm hoping to be able to launch some initiatives that build innovative learning opportunities for kids so what I have here now sort of tentatively and I say tentatively because that first one um, to have a STEAM coordinator um, pos position for the district and to get some of our kids so that they were doing things like internships and externships and that we're growing STEAM programs in some of our elementary schools. That would be um, dependent upon grant money and as you know the state has not finalized its budget yet. Uh, we have been earmarked for a fairly substantial grant um, but you know until that budget is finalized that, that can go away. So hopefully the state will have that done next Wednesday or Thursday and we'll know whether or not this, this could be a reality. Um, through Tech, the Education um, Collaborative, we have uh, an opportunity to train two teachers um, as FUSE Fellows and that would be something that would promote more personalized learning in our district. Um, I would like to conduct a special education audit um, with uh, Karen Zaleski um, and Mrs. Carver and uh, Mrs. DeBeau at Marathon in Elmwood to just sort of look to see if our special education delivery instruction methods are as effective and efficient as, as they should be. Um, so the, the person who had come in and done sort of a, a micro audit at Elmwood last spring would be the consultant with whom uh, we would be working. She's done an awful lot of work in area schools. I know that she's just spent six years over in Westboro sort of really analyzing building by building their special education programs. Uh, her first sort of foray into our district is that she thinks that we're doing a very good job here. So that was, that was great news and, and nice to see. Uh, Mrs. Parson has started to do an awful lot of work on guided inquiry and we're really excited about that. That's not a, a maybe, that's, that's a definite for us and at some point maybe that would become some kind of pre precursor to project-based learning. But what we know about guided inquiry is it gives us that sort of, you know, sort of research and autonomy, those kinds of skills that kids need to be able to um, really guide their own, own learning with, um, with just assistance from, from teachers. And um, we have an awful lot of work going on at the high school, so number five I may be uh, revising because I think that this, this minimizes uh, what's actually happening at the high school in terms of SEL. And when Mr. Bishop and I have talked about SEL, you know, we are in agreement that you know, SEL seems to be that, that thing that we, that we react to often at the high school level. Um, SEL is probably not dissimilar from, you know, those kinds of implicit biases that we have that just keep building over time in our heads and one day we become aware of them. I think the same thing sort of happens with social emotional learning. Like we have kids who 
um, in their, their very young years may be tied to technology, may not engage in free play, may begin to develop a social media presence that might be different from who they are in reality, may feel the pressure to succeed at the same levels and in the same disciplines that their peers do until they get to a place where they realize that they are not who they want to be. And then they struggle, whether it's you know academically, socially, or emotionally. And I think that's what gets us into that place at the high school. So um, in while we have that piece there focused on the high school, um, I'm hoping that a lot of my, my blogging and information that goes out this year will be information around SEL targeted toward um, families that have, as we would say, um, little persons in their house. Uh, so you can again see that it's a tied to the superintendent's rubric, it's tied to our strategic objectives, and you can see the resources are, I think, um, pretty good there, and I'm happy to take questions. Hi, can I ask who the consultant is who performed the mini edit, yes, audit yes. of so this her bed name system? name is Donna Simone. Donna Simone? Yeah, S-I-M-O-N-E. And what is her background? Uh, so she was a special educator and then a special education director for a very long time, uh, but she has had her own um, consulting business for the past, oh, maybe two decades? Yeah, okay. it's been quite a while. Um, and what I do like about her is, despite the fact that she's been at it a very long time, I think that um, you'll find that she's very current in the work. So the literature that she presents to us about you know, kids and profiles and grouping and instructional models uh, was all very current. Okay. So that was exciting. Great. Yeah. Thank you. My only comment on this um, goal, and we've talked some about this, and I don't know, you know, how we fold this in, but um, I love that we're bringing in new learning initiatives and the idea of like a STEAM coordinator who can um, create and, and offer internships or externships and so forth. It's wonderful. Um, from the consumer, perspective, I always wonder if we can't uh, make some headway with stress and student um, anxiety by helping with goal setting. Mm -hmm. And so when we're offering more and more and more, how do we help a student pick and choose and make a plan that is rational? Right. And so I, I, the one thing that I was kind of hoping we could kind of get to is some initiative that would help with students, student self-advocacy and goal setting and working with somebody, um, guidance or otherwise, to, to kind of look at the menu and instead of feeling like I have to do it all, right. how can I pick and choose and get some help with that? Because I think it would come from the bottom up. So I don't know if that can fit in here, but I'll just throw that out there. Yeah. So let me think about that at the secondary level. Yeah. Like I, I know for sure we don't have K to five resources. I, yeah. I don't think for a goal like that right now. Um, you are doing PBIS work mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. At the elementary level. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, Dr. Kapner, you mentioned a little bit about blogs as a mechanism to reach out to parents, especially around SEL. Um, and, you know, um, over a period in time, we have discussed this, that uh, families are a big part of the equation, especially when it comes to SEL. Um, do you think we should do uh, or target more than blogs for this year? Are you able to do that? Are there any thoughts, ideas around that? So I think historically, you know, if we try to do things like, you know, bring in speakers, I think that those things are sort of met with, you know, I think limited success. You know, I mean, after parents have worked a full day and put dinner on the table and then they have to go through the homework process, I think that sometimes just sheer exhaustion keeps people at home. So I'm sort of happy to think about other ways to bring folks in, you know, to that kind of learning, to disseminate that kind of information. Um, I guess there's nothing to stop us also from sending out, you know, sort of an email blast that says, this is what the blog says, or, you know, right. these are some of the other places where you can find resources. You know, I would yeah. be more than happy to do that. Here's a great book to read. If I could add, I, I think right. there's a lot of um, activity. But, oh. Sorry. Oh, no, hi, it's Jen Mina. Um, I was thinking ahead, that there's a lot of activity happening right now in terms mm -hmm. of planning at the high school level. And I think that what we've kind of been talking about, or at least what I personally am thinking about, is how SEL 
can be um, rolled out in so many different ways. And so at this retreat that um, Carol was talking about that's happening with the high school next week there, many of the agenda items are targeted to exactly these topics. So talking about pa student passion and what are um, topics that we can get students really inspired by and thinking about different pathways for students that really make sense based on student profiles and voice and choice um, is one of the things. So I think we're talking about, or what I'm hearing the high school talk about specifically is how do we um, really embed some of this instruction with all of our teachers and mm -hmm. I know they're thinking about providing PD for all teachers and um, really trying to get them up and running and I think what you talked about earlier Carol was bringing in the SMLs because they're really some of the movers and shakers in the high school in terms of leading departments but mm -hmm. I think people might feel reassured if we hear at some point from the high school on some of the work mm -hmm. that they're doing because they are doing a lot uh, it may not take exactly kind of what we all have in our heads, but I think when we see all of these different pieces put together, uh, people will find it to be pretty impressive. Sure. Thank you for sharing that, Jen. Um, Dr. Kavna, I, I uh, particularly liked how uh, this goal, um, you know, touches on so many areas and kids with diverse needs. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see this particular goal unfold. Great. Thank you. So I, it, in the interest of time, um, we're going to bring this back again to sure. our next meeting yeah. uh, and because we are be actually about 50 minutes behind schedule. Okay. So I would like Let's get going. to bring the district website to jump that ahead because otherwise they're going to be hanging out, hanging yeah. out for a long time. And people then we weeping can, in the audience. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then we can look at what makes sense to move forward with that has to happen today and if there's some stuff we want to move to the next meeting, we can do that. But let's okay. Great. go ahead with the website presentation. Mr. Ghosh. He's like, man, I thought I had another hour. Yeah. <laughs> Still adding content to the website. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, looks beautiful. Oh, okay. uh, mm -hmm. It has been exciting to explore it kind of a, on my own. So. Yeah, it's fun. It's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> fun, fun. fun. Fun or fun? Fun and funny all, all at the same time. I may need uh, this. Uh, we have a presentation I think that HCAM has, but okay. we are out of order. From, okay, fine. I'm not sure. If I can go back. Thank there. you. Yeah, I don't know if he wants me to plug in directly or do you want to show? Because you're not connected to the screen. I'm not, either, right? No, I think. Okay. I don't know. There I think if go. you want to do um, a live. Walk through of yeah. your site, you have to plug yeah, in directly. So in the past, they've run a cable to that screen, which I can do. Maybe steal. Goes well beyond <laughs> my technological. Yeah. I'll just wait for something okay. magical to happen. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Here we go. What's that? The meeting agenda handout can usually be on a table. Are they somewhere else? They're they are available online. online. Uh, yeah, right if you go through the town website, I know it's on there for so sure. Okay. If you okay. click on the town okay. calendar, no, I know how to get that. Okay. Since you brought the very latest from moment, physically in person, it might not be. Oh, oh, we oh, have that. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have a viewer. <laughs> yes, at the time we did not have yours. No, it's worth the small one. Oh, I just had to plug in that one? Yeah. Okay. And turn on the power. Yeah. Oh. Can you get it? Sure. Okay. That may have made my day. I know. Let's <laughs> just say thank you to Amy right afterwards. All right, all right. This is a mini break. Oh, I know. I might use the restroom too. Okay, we're going to take a break then. Okay. So we're going to take a like a five minute break since we we will no longer have corn. Break. Technological break. Um, <laughs> for five minutes. I'll be back in five minutes as well. Okay, okay Nina. Thank you. You'll hold down the fort here together? We will. <laughs> I didn't use the ladies' room, so that worked well. I was concerned about <laughs> getting up with, when that came in the corner. Are you going to take a break? Yes. I can't. Um, yeah. Because you can't control? No, 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 we can, except I made a couple of edits, so I thought, does it matter? I think if the audience can see this as well. What will happen is once you click that link on what's on the uh, on the PowerPoint, it is this is an extended screen. Okay. The link is going to show up on the main screen, and it will come over here. You can't control it from the uh, PowerPoint. Okay. 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 Okay
And then do you have, I think, I think Carol has the controller for the, so for the slide, yeah, that we can forward and leave that up there and then we can show the website from here, if that, if that works. Our topic is so fun, we lost our audience. <laughs> I know. So you're going to do the first couple slides, man, and then yeah, that's going to do the live. Oh, yeah, you saw that. All within 14 minutes and uh, 14 minutes. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Go. But we're an hour behind. Oh, yeah. Right. You actually have to do it in negative time. In negative time. <laughs> we can do it in five minutes. Do you have any questions about the website? Just yeah. email me. Yeah. Here's our home, home, home number. Home number, <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, we'll talk okay. after a show. <laughs> hey, Jim, good to see you. All right. Good to see you, too. Okay. Good. Good. I think I stole all of you guys' announcements. No, no, we just didn't. No, I just wanted to get the right one. Okay. I did the one that we talked about in the meeting. That, that's I said to me, Shuck, our topic is um, so exciting that people just fled. Have a list of the playlist. <laughs> 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 the website, oh, never go. <laughs> no, I know. Now everybody's doing laps up and down the hallway waiting for the restroom. Oh, no. This is a playlist of playlists. Yeah. Playlist. 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 Yeah. And then whatever ones that we're covering uh, will all show up there. So we can girls, basketball, yeah, boys, yeah, basketball, and volleyball, they'll all show up right from that link. And they'll switch out at a big date without you having to yeah. update the website. Okay. Yeah, yeah that would be cool. Yeah. But I think we should have links to all those. And then it's more chill, right? Yeah. 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 Front page yeah. is just yeah. yeah. like, yeah. sorry, yeah. highlight certain yeah. ones. Yeah. So like in the high school. It's nice. I love being able to be able to and you have an incoming subscriber when you're out of HHS today. Yeah. Because uh, once you've seen that, can't you get O'Brien? Yes. Yep. So you just have one yes. box which shows the current, but you can also so see past yes. ones from the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I was okay. seeing your faces. Yeah, uh, it, 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 it's, I'm, 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 she really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 just sure it's July 1st. All right. I just said, no, we're going to basic. So I know. She always has a smile. So it's good, I know, and I'm now careful. Yeah, we may need to, um, yeah, just my discovery, that we may need to uh, adjust the color of uh, the orange. Oh, really? Yeah. Through the accessibility? So the the biggest issue is the Hopkinton yeah. orange oh, yeah. on, the, on the text. The contrast difference between that <laughs> orange and the white doesn't meet the minimum yeah. ratio. Interesting. Of three to one, it's yeah. it's it's like one to <laughs> one to two point nine one. Okay. So I emailed them to say and the same thing's happening with the footer. Yeah. The white phone numbers. Okay. The contrast between the white and the green <laughs> isn't great enough to meet the minimum AA accessibility standard. Okay. Um, and so there's errors on since those two things appear on like every page pretty much. Yeah. Uh, so I emailed Final Science and we're gonna have to work. We might have to hold it orange. Make it bump it up to make it dark or a little brighter just so there's a contrast there. So that's good to know. But yeah, good things. Oh, right, now, so did, things did, did site improve by that? Yeah, I was looking through site improve last nice. night. So are we on? So that's that good. that's the biggest thing um, that we have to work on. And then in terms of your, we can find a screen reader, but the best thing for it does do a screen reader. Are we on simulation? Simulation because of the headers. That's probably and so we have a few pages where we have to just all stop doing arm that, lifts. Screen readers will work normally. So. Okay, so Mina, are you back? Very chilly in here. Yep. It's not just here. Mina? Right, so Mina is not here, but I'm. Carol, I think you are um, the slide controller when we start. Oh, just yes, I am. Just, that's okay, we're good where we are. Actually, right. I'll just send it down to you. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to text Mina. Yeah. Oh, my Oh, is that? I don't think I'm going to have to phone issue. I'm going to have to say, I'm going 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 to say,
Um, we don't, we're behind schedule, so I'll move as quickly as we can. We have a few slides, and Mr. Ghosh is going to do some uh, live highlights uh, from the website of what to look at. So, uh, okay, so before we start, um, I just want to take a minute to thank a whole lot of people um, for getting us to where we are today. Uh, we have a website subcommittee. One of our members is here. Amy Ritter Bush is in the audience. And um, I don't know if you want to sit there, if you want to come up, or you can chime in as we go through this if you have any thoughts. But we had a whole lot of uh, subcommittee members, both um, people on the, on the tech team, uh, different administrators and administrative uh, assistants in the district, and a bunch of parents who spanned many grades. Um, and I can honestly say that everybody made significant contributions, either with, um, you know, comments, um, suggestions, insights into usage. It was really a team effort from the subcommittee in terms of getting to our design in particular. Um, so I cannot thank um, folks enough. I don't think they knew what they signed up for when they agreed to be on the subcommittee. Um, and we still have them trapped for a, a couple more months, I think, but um, it's been great. Um, but the real work happened um, with Mr. Ghosh and his team, and they have been amazing. The deadline is, was extremely aggressive. Um, the scope of the work is huge, and they've worked tirelessly. So um, many were on the some were on the subcommittee, and there are many others you can see in the slide um, who just have given a ton of time, energy, effort, and um, knowledge and skill to make this happen. So. Um, Please pass on, Mr. Ghosh, our sincere thanks to everybody for their efforts I will. to your team. Um, the district leadership team and content owners, um, you, people may not realize how much work they have had to do to look at their content, write new content, um, look at new pictures, find um, new information to share, and it's going to keep going. We're still working on that. So um, it's, you know sort of unbudgeted time that we're asking for. They're finding ways to uh, make it happen. So thank you to all of them. You would pass that on, Dr. Kavanaugh. And the school committee for your support, and of course the families and communities. Um, right now I'm going to thank you for being a little bit patient as we get through the rollout, um, and then just for your support and feedback and comments um, as we go live. So uh, that's me on the next slide. Uh, so Mr. Ghosh is going to just take a minute and point out some new features um, that are important for people to be aware of as they're trying to use the new site. So I will Perfect. pass it over to Thank him, you. and hopefully HKM can show the yeah, screen. So, so hopefully I'm kind of, if you can see the screen, I've got the screen over here. Uh, so the, the current current site, the district homepage is, is live, um, and the school sites, I mean, that, I think, Mandy, you're going to talk about when the school sites come up next. But um, so currently I think that some of the changes uh, for families and kind of staff uh, on the homepage, um, what's different as you look across the header is that we have this utility menu up top which will get you to the various schools. These schools uh, links aren't active yet, they're just redirecting to the homepage because they're not ready. But as soon as those go live on August 5th, these, these school pages will be, will be working. Um, the next big kind of uh, button is student and families. Uh, and the student and families is meant to be a landing page for students to families to kind of come and find all things relative to them uh, and have quick links out to other resources so they can get to them quickly. Um, staff doesn't, won't work for families. That's a, that's a portal, so that's designed for staff so we can put private information up there or certain forms that staff may need. So staff have a login to that and that gets them into the portal where they'll have those resources available. Um, and then the, the last one on the right is find it fast. And so this, this is pretty important. I think we've had a couple questions from the community about this, but when people are looking for those quick links, this is where, where families should kind of quickly go as well. So a lot of the old quick links of how to get to calendars, how to get to lunch menus, how to make payments are all kind of listed here on this page. So we really kind of advise parents to kind of get used to going here um, looking for information, or there's quite a, a, a robust uh, search engine embedded. And so, like for example, uh, Naviance is, is one thing that maybe parents are looking for. If you just type in Naviance, you'll get some search results. And if for some reason it's not working, I encourage parents to email us uh, through the, the webmaster email and we can kind of fine tune the search so that we cover all the really popular forums, articles, resources here so they can get to them quickly. So, for example, we customize Naviance so that you can, for example, actually get a link directly to it. So if you search Naviance, 
the link will show up, you click to it and away you go and you have access to that. So the search is pretty robust and it will get better as we add um, details to it. So that is available. Quick links are down below for most of the common resources that parents are trying to get to. Um, then kind of back at the home page, um, I think the key is to think about uh, in terms of the calendar, I think that's a big change for families. Uh, we'll rotate some of the key events here um, through the calendar. What we've tried to work on for families, which was a big ask, was the time. So we're trying to make sure um, uh, the specific time is available for the event and a very specific location is available for the event. Uh, so what you'll see for location primarily will be the building. Uh, and then maybe a dash with the actual location within the building. We've gone back and forth and talked about, well, should we put in the actual address for the building there? Uh, but we're finding that that's not really useful. And it's not necessarily specific enough for existing parents. And our hope was, well, if we put the address in there, maybe on a mobile device, you click the address and it will map, map you there, but that doesn't, that doesn't really work. So adding a long address is not helpful. So, I want people to understand that you'll see the school, and then if there's a specific location available within the school, we'll put that right after the location. Um, the other big thing for parents to kind of remember, and Amy's done a good job of kind of helping us uh, remember to, to tell people, is that you should take down and remove old calendars. So if you're subscribing to the old um, calendars, Google calendars, uh, you, should you should remove those and delete those because we're no longer really populating those old calendars. We have new calendars that we've created and you should subscribe to those. So to do that, um, you know, as a, as a parent, the best way is if you're from the, on the home page, you can click view full calendar mode. Um, there are some basic instructions on how to do this on the, on the right hand side of how to add the new ones. But the key is seeing this little um, RSS feed icon uh, in the top right of the calendar. And when you click on that, you'll get all the iCal feeds of all the calendars that are available. And so you'll, you'll click on those, and those are the URLs that you want to add or subscribe to, and those will be the new calendars. So it's, it's important to remove the old ones and add these new ones, uh, and you'll be good to go. That covers calendars. Um, down below, just give most people an idea, these are going to be our news and announcement um, area, this middle section of the home page. This will also be uh, the same on uh, the school level pages. So, you know, current news information will kind of rotate through the slider. Um, often, if there's additional details available, you can click on, within the image and you'll get a little pop up with, with details uh, about the news. Um, there's a full news page. If you want to see all the news, you just click on the full news page and it'll take you there. The, the next section, the highlights from the Hills section, is, is designed to have more specific information, longer stories, blog posts. So Dr. Kavanaugh's blog post we've put and connected down here. Um, other stories about Lombardi, the therapy dog. So other longer stories about the student of the month maybe will be here or for highlighting a certain faculty member, we'd put those stories down in this section. Uh, and then the lower part just feeds some facts and figures about the district and then the social media um, Instagram account for the district will appear at the bottom. So that kind of covers the home page. Um, what are some other big, any other big things, Amanda, that you want to talk about? Um, I, I think, know we're kind of limited on time. Yeah, I think, Find I think, a Fast was big. And, yeah, the Find a Fast. I mean, I think in general we spend a lot of time um, uh, trying to design an information structure that was intuitive. So the home page, the menus are sort of designed the way the information is like academics, extracurricular, district departments, and so forth. The top menu bar, like the students and families, that's more for how the user looks at it and how you can get at the same information but from like a more user specific role. So I think for most families, um, find a fast will be your best friend. You can do a quick search. I mean, yeah. we in the policy subcommittee um, were working on a policy and I thought, uh oh, I'm going to try the new find it search. Yeah. And don't you know, the policy came right up. It was great. It was really easy. And I think um, the more people get comfortable that our search does now work, um, the better. And if people are looking for things, as you said, and they're not indexed or they can't find them, um, provide some feedback through the webmaster email and we can get things indexed because I think Find a Fast is going to be a great tool for folks. Correct. Great. And um, athletics, and I know we're going to talk about developments, but athletics page is still still being developed. You know, we're building out team schedules uh, and things, and Amanda's going to get to that. Um, 
the campus map is is finally changed and updated so just so all the school committee and the community is, is aware of that uh, we kind of just got hot, hot off the presses last night the new um, basically campus map uh, so it's kind of displayed over here so we reworked the campus map we added uh, Elmwood School and Marathon to the map with a legend uh, we updated and added the cross country trail um, kind of mapped out around there and so and some of the rules so that that's available it's up on the, the website there's a PDF version uh, of it um, and those can be downloaded uh, at the bottom of the map um, either a JPEG or a PDF version. So those are available. We shared them out with the with the town so that Parks and Recs has access to it. And so that's a new 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 addition. So we're excited. Any other general questions about? Can you demonstrate the translate button? Yeah, sure. So the best way to, to demonstrate the translate button, um, I, you know, policy page or any of the school committee policies um, are a good way to kind of look at that. So. If you navigate to anything on the web, um, it's an HTML typically. So here's an example of policy AC. Uh, if you click on translate, you'll get a drop down list of all the available languages um, within Google Translate. Um, and you can just kind of pick, pick a language uh, and it, the policy or the page, uh, the text will automatically translate for you. Um, and then you can re-click on the page and then convert it back to English if you need to at the top and it changes the page. So that's readily available. It sits up top as you kind of go from page to page. The translate button always stays up top in that utility menu um, for community or users to have access to. One other thing, Alan and I were looking for the uh, school committee agenda, which is actually not there. Yes, we, we talked about, okay. yeah, we're in our transition. We haven't totally gone operational with this. Yeah, we're working with uh, people at the central office that are in charge of that are just have been trained and they're going to start working on adding the, the menus, the agendas. But I would encourage folks to, um, if you have five minutes, either on your phone, because it's now mobile or um, at home, explore a little bit because our um, our district department heads and so forth have done some really interesting new work on articulating what our departments are all about what the uh, mrs. Parsons did a great job of articulating an overview of our curriculum for the district and there's some really interesting new content that I think will help communicate with families what we as a district are trying to do um, so I really encourage you to explore a little bit and um, you know see let us know what you think so um, just back over to the slides. I don't know if, if HCAM is transitioning, but I, I wanted to talk quickly about our next steps. Um, Mr. Ghosh mentioned that on August 5th, we're going to roll out phase two. Um, I think we may have said it was August 15th in our email. So surprise, it's coming early. Yeah. <laughs> that never happens. Um, that will be the rollout for the school homepages and the pages that are related to the school homepages. Um, at that point, there will also hopefully be the athletics overviews by sport, not the full. Um, maybe the full detail for athletics for all teams at all levels, but the overview, like what is field hockey and so forth. What is the program? Who are the coaches, coach contacts and so forth. Um, and I'll just say that there is a huge effort underway to continually update content. We understand that as, it, as we mentioned in our email to the community, we are in a transitional launch phase right now. So we know there's more content that needs to go out there. We're still tweaking it um, and adding. So I would say keep looking. Um, by August 5th, a lot of the basics should be covered. And then I imagine the weeks between August 5th and the start of the school year will continue to add and um, build out our content. In late September, the website subcommittee will, will issue a community satisfaction survey. We had surveyed way back when about what people wanted, and so now we want to circle back about a month or so in and say, did you get what you wanted? Is this, we thought we heard you, this is what we think you said, is it working? Um, and at that point, we'll come back to school committee with results on that. Um, and just so people know, there are a lot of discussions ongoing, again, to continue to build this great new tool that we have. Mr. Ghosh and Ms. King are looking at um, the athletics events calendar. There are some complications with linking it to the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association. Um, so we're trying to figure out the best solution for parents and um, teams to get the right information on calendaring. 
um, and so forth. There's a lot of discussion there. There's a lot of discussion um, that will happen probably next week with the website subcommittee. Um, we've been asked to look at the district community page and maybe figure out what text should be on there. There's some text up there now, but we're going to revisit that. Um, figure out if there are more FAQs that we should add, and then take another pass at the structure of the student and families portal and make sure the layout, we, if we want to move things around, that's a pretty easy shift. So make sure there's nothing that um, easy that we should do to make that uh, more usable. Um, school committee, uh, we will have to have an agenda item, uh, Mina and Nancy, to look at our content in particular, um, just to talk about ways that we can use the tool to best communicate our policies. We, it's up there, but mm -hmm. there may be some tweaking um, that we can do. We have some constraints because now our site is really great on the phone as well, it's mobile. Mm -hmm. um, and that changes a little bit of how we use um, tables and, and other um, constructs that we used in the past. So we will have to talk some about our content. And um, we also are looking at we're, um, PDFs in translation. Like when we have um, PDFs, we have eliminated most of them. But there are a few. And when we have them, and we have them also in Mandarin and Spanish, where do we put them? Where does it make most sense? And that's a conversation with um, Ms. Kimball and Mr. Gosh. So there's a lot of that kind of work still going on. So if you see something, you think, oh, gosh, that doesn't seem like it's quite right, probably there's a conversation going on. Feel free to flag it. But there is still a lot of work going on. Um, the subcommittee was specifically tasked with keeping us on budget and on timeline, so I want to just touch on touch base on this. We originally budgeted $45,000 for the development and delivery of the site. Um, we went through several design iterations um, with Final Site to get our layouts the way we wanted them and to also add some layouts to accommodate some tricky data that we had. It ran a little bit over budget, as most major website projects do, but not too much. And Mr. Ghosh was able to fund the gap of 3500 or so through his um, existing IT budget, so that we ended up s still within, generally, the confines of our original ask. Um, there were some related investments. Uh, as Mr. Ghosh mentioned, there's a great new campus map, which was mandated because we have changed. We've added a parking lot now where we had a field, and things have shifted with the turf field. So that was already on the agenda, but it does tie nicely into the website. Mm -hmm. We get to reap the rewards. And that was paid for out of an anticipated expense from the IT budget. The timeline um, we were targeting in July uh, launch, we were constrained by the cost of running our old site. So we had to get off or we had to pay for another year. So that really lit the fire under everybody. Um, and I'm really impressed with both Final Site and the IT project team that we got there, which is why it's not 100% perfect. We sort of sacrificed perfection on July 1st. But it's, it's really great and very close. And we're, by August 5th, we'll be um, pretty complete. And Global I appreciate schools would say take a year to two years to do the migration that we did. In about three months. Yeah, it's, it's, it, <laughs> so, it was a cra crazy and aggressive, we three months, aggressive so. timeline. So it's, um, I feel, uh, you know, very, I'm very proud of the work that you guys did because I, it, I don't know how you did it. So it's great that you got there. And Final Sight ended up being a good partner in, in getting there and turning things around as well. Um, we were able to shut off the old site on time, so we did not incur any additional hosting charges. And as I mentioned, the content updates will be ongoing. Um, we had like three main key new deliverables, uh, accessibility, translation, and it being mobile friendly. I don't want to go on forever, but I think we're um, well on track to meet those needs. Um, we are um, working with Final Sight to get a few kinks uh, worked out with the accessibility, with our coloring, the contrast. Mr. Ghosh said our orange um, and our green um, contrast is not quite uh, strong enough, so we'll probably be adjusting our colors a little bit uh, through Mr. Ghosh's analytics tools. He's been able to, to confirm um, that we're pretty, we're, we're meeting the accessibility guidelines except in those two areas, so um, there's a little bit more work to be done. Translation is working uh, nicely, as you saw. We have eliminated, it's been a lot of work to take away the PDFs and switch to HTML so that it can be translated. And I thank, you know, Megan and um, Georgette and a lot of people who worked on that, converting those, and Linda and so forth. Um, let's see, and mobile friendly. Um, I'm, I think a lot of parents spend a lot of time on their phones. So hopefully we will hear that people are having success in navigating on mobile. Um, 
we had to do a lot of work to get there, but hopefully um, people are happy with that. And finally, um, Find It Fast and Site Search are your new best friends. Um, and if you still struggle, please email webmaster at hopkinton.k12.ma.us, and that will go to Mr. Ghosh and Mrs. Henderson, who are tracking um, community feedback and questions and issues. And the website subcommittee, just so Mina, you and Nancy know, I think we're probably going to run through about mid-October. We want to see the survey results come in, mm -hmm. see if there's anything, you know, significant that has to happen there, but probably around mid-October to late October, we will um, be coming forward to disband, because at that point, I think our charter will be fulfilled. Question? Wow. <laughs> Bravo. Yeah. yeah. Looks really good. Thank you. Yeah. Looks great. So wow is absolutely done. right. I think fabulous, fabulous work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody? I, I have more to say. I, I didn't mean to um, cut off if Jen or whoever said the first vowel wants to say something. Nope, I think it's all you there. I think you're right. <laughs> um, so I'm so in love with this website. Um, it's so sleek. It's, you know, easy to navigate. Uh, it's fun to navigate, actually. And I love all the pictures. I love the fact that, you know, there are profiles of all the educators, you know, some of their backgrounds are shared. Uh, I'm excited to see our safety, our uh, SROs pictures there. Uh, it looks like such thoughtful work and, you know, it was done in such a methodical manner, what you have shared here. Um, Amanda and Mr. Ghosh, I know this is, you know, you try to put the work in a few slides, but I can see how much more has gone in just looking at all the little details that you have taken care of from the time um, the committee was launched to uh, the time that you have been able to do this launch it's a really short time and content and being thoughtful around all of this um, kudos to the entire um, subcommittee and each and every one of the volunteers and staff members who worked so hard to make this happen um, i'm sure there are things to work on as you're listed um, but this is a great achievement um, so thank you so much for working on this thank you Others? Amy, did you have anything else? All right. Very well done, then. Uh, that will move us, then, if there are no more comments on this. I, I would like to propose that we look, just because we're running about an hour behind schedule at this point, uh, at moving a couple of things to August, um, it, unless people are want to continue through, but I, in looking at the agenda, and we had discussed during agenda planning that some of these things specific, I think we had said, you know, the, the school committee norms, we could move till August. Is that correct? That was my recollection. We had said if we had to move things in the meeting, that, too that's long. right. Um, and the reason for that is that the school committee, um, as it is, has been around, and we have worked with Dr. Kavanaugh. We absolutely want to revise, but don't have to do it at this meeting. Right. And I would also suggest that perhaps we consider looking at the full liaison roles and the presentation in August as well to kind of try to buy back close to a half an hour, so we're only a half an hour over. I am absolutely fine with that as well. And if we want to push back on the calendar discussion too, I think that's fine too. Perfect. I think the dates are already out there. If there are any comments or changes, we can uh, make those. Okay. And, so I'm fine and, with that as well, Nancy. All right, so do you want people that have comments individually to reach out to you? individually and we'll bring it back as an agenda item in August if that works for people. Yes, I think that sounds good. And and then I guess I would suggest that we go on to old business B because I'm assuming that's why Mr. Keller is Yes, he is here, here for old business B and it's old, business old business C. C. <laughs> uh -huh. Sorry. That's right. I called you out of order, sorry. No. <laughs> uh, good afternoon. Thank you. Hi. Um, so I have um, two field trip uh, permission final approval forms uh, that I'd like to bring in front of you today. The first is uh, Nature's Classroom. 
This actually would mark, uh, if approved, the 27th year that we would attend Nature's Classroom. Um, the dates are Tuesday, October 15th through Friday, October 18th. And the cost of the program per student is $360 um, for each family, per student, I should say. Um, so in Nature's Classroom, for those that are unaware, is an overnight field trip that takes place in Charlton, Massachusetts. It's for our grade six students. Uh, it's a science-based uh, field trip um, where students have the opportunity to participate in experiments. Um, there's um, whole group activities. There's also students have an opportunity to sign up for different elective types of programs uh, that run that, that run during over the course of those three days. Shall I do um, New York City as well, or take them one at a time? I think we can go ahead if you want. Okay. okay. All right. So uh, seek a motion to approve the uh, Grade Six Nature Classroom. So moved. Second. Second. It's a motion by Meg. Second by Amanda. We'll do a roll call starting with you, Meg. Aye. Amanda. Aye. Yes. Jen. Me is uh, my yes. And Mina. Aye. Okay. So that is approved, and we'll go into the New York City then. Thank you. Um, so uh, the also similar to Nature's Classroom, um, seeking final approval for our New York City trip uh, for grade eight uh, next or this coming school year. The dates are Wednesday, June 10th through Friday, June 12th. Um, the cost on New York City on this trip is a little bit more than last year. So it's actually uh, $779 per student. Uh, that compares to $755 this past year. Uh, largely due to uh, the number of students. So at, at present, I know Dr. Kavanaugh was mentioning enrollment earlier. Uh, at present, our current eighth grade is at 235, though I think that might be 239 now, I think I saw it earlier. Um, but um, it comes down to numbers, and so it, the cost per student goes up when we have less students. Uh, we had 280 students attend in 2019. So, um, so as I mentioned, the cost is 779 per student. Um, and um, you know, New York City. We this past year we attended uh, when we arrived. We went to the Statue of Liberty. Uh, we were able to attend uh, To Kill a Mockingbird on Broadway this past year, which is a book that we read in eighth grade. Um, we have a dinner and boat cruise. We attended this past year the Museum of Modern Art, mm -hmm. uh, the 9/11 Museum, and a variety of other activities that uh, 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 tie into our curriculum as, as much as we as we can. That's great. Questions, comments. Okay, then I would seek a motion to approve the grade eight uh, trip to New York City. So moved. Second. So motion by Meg, second by Amanda. We'll do a roll call starting with you, Meg. Aye. Amanda, Aye. Jen. Yes. I'm a yes. Mina? Aye. Okay, so thank you very much. Of course, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Keller. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Hope your summer's going summer. well. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. So then we'll, that allows us to go back to where we. Um, originally went out of order, which was at new business item F, which is the tech voting member participant. My understanding was this was a time sensitive. Um, this one is time sensitive. In fact, tech called us the other day looking for our voting members. So I think we need to wrap this one up. Um, Mina has served as our tech voting member for the past year. Um, Unlike other collaboratives, Tech will allow either a school committee member or the superintendent to be their voting member. So we are looking for someone to take on that role. Um, and, and you know, as we always say about Tech, they are a great organization. It's a collaborative that affords us professional learning, special education services. It just it does an awful lot. So, and just for to refresh my memory and to make sure we all have the understanding, it, it there's also if. If the voting member is a school committee member, you still go as well, and vice versa. If you're the voting, or the superintendent's the voting member, a school committee member can still go I go as to an some of them. Okay. Um, they also do superintendent uh, lunch meetings, mm -hmm. so I always go to the superintendent lunch meeting and do go to some of the assistant superintendent meetings. Yeah. So it's and great for job alike. For clarification, what is the, I know the meeting days and times are fairly standard each month yeah they're week. Friday mornings at nine o'clock in Walpole is that okay. correct Mina 
um, 8.15 is the time uh, people start getting together. 8.30 is the starting time. I would say it's about a 45 minute drive from Hopkinton. And there's usually not much traffic uh, Friday morning. You're going against traffic, but it is a good 45 minute drive. Um, I personally think it's a fabulous opportunity um, to learn, to connect with people um, and also to see uh, a different, um, you know, uh, being part of a different board and how that is managed. So you kind of get a very good feel for it. Fabulous people. Uh, we don't have any students going to tech at the moment. Uh, however, the services that they offer and the opportunity to network is great. What I was thinking was given the time commitment, uh, what ends up happening is many times they're short on quorum. So pretty much every time someone should be there, the voting member, you know, I, I think it's important that the person be there mm -hmm. physically present, right? Versus a liaison that we assign from the school committee uh, we can choose based on the agenda to participate. So I was hoping that if Dr. Kavanaugh had um, the bandwidth to be the uh, voting member, uh, because they look at all the budgets, they look at a bunch of those uh, documents to approve on, and we can have someone else, you know, I, was that Jen who was showing some interest? Well, I am interested, yeah, I just, I, that's, you're right, It's that's a tricky time. 8.15 on a Friday um, morning is a tricky time, but yeah. Yeah, I could do that. So, okay. are you, is that adding, are you good with that though? I mean, yes. there are a lot of superintendents who do go to the Friday morning at 8.15 time. Okay. Yeah. And is it I'm every month, it. every other, which one? It's once a month. Once a month? Okay. Yeah, yes, it is once a month. Um, like I said, you know, we can have Dr. Kavanaugh be the voting member, but we can still have someone else give it a try this year as a, uh, as a liaison. I have enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, like I said, excellent networking mm -hmm. opportunity. So this way, um, you would have an opportunity to pick and choose which days you want to go based on the topic. And actually those sessions are open to other school committee members also. As I shared, I suggested four topics possibly um, for consideration for the upcoming year uh, for sessions that could be open to school committee members. So in last year, uh, it, Nancy, Amanda and I uh, went to the legislative breakfast in February. So there are events which are open to all. Okay, so. Else? I mean, I don't, if you're interested, it's fine. I can't do it. See, so I think all we need to determine right now is the voting member. Okay. Oh, okay, good. So. All right. Uh, if you're comfortable, and, and that's fine, what sure. Mina's suggesting, do we sure. want to have a motion to appoint Dr. Kavanaugh as the voting member of Tech, and then we'll, we can come back to think about for the liaison roles next month who wants to do the as long as you're comfortable with that i'm okay with that you're now. okay with it yes yeah. for sure all right. okay all right so moved okay. second so roll call aye. aye aye yes i'm a yes and mina aye okay thank you dr cabano thank sure you very much that moves us into item G, which is FY20 gas and electric contracts with the, uh, excuse me with Ms. Rotherick <laughs> thank you um so basically what I'm looking for are um, both gas and electric uh, supply contracts will be expiring, uh, one in the fall and one in the spring. Um, so what I'm looking to do is procure and, and negotiate those contracts now. Um, right now the energy market is at a low and energy is a commodity. It's one of those things that every 24 hours the prices will, will change. So we do work with a broker, Tradition Energy, um, who will go and get the prices for me and they expire within 24 hours. So when we get the best rates basically is when I would like to be able to execute that contract. So I'm looking for the school committee to um, authorize that. And basically from a budgeting standpoint, um, the, the costs are coming in pretty much at um, either at the at our current rate or below gas is coming in below um, so it, it should not have a negative bu budget impact is it's basically what I'm saying great 
So I would seek, unless there are questions, no. seek a motion to approve Ms. Rothermack to the authority to negotiate and execute in good faith for FY20 gas and electric contracts. So moved. Second. So roll call with Meg. Aye. 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 Yes. Yes. And Nina? Aye. Okay. So that so carries. And that moves us then into the expense transfer approval for school lunches. So what we do every year, by law, uh, we are not allowed to carry deficit accounts in a school lunch um, a, a revolving account because this is federal and state um, directives. So each year we do budget for an estimated uh, negative balance. So you can see our negative balance at the end of this year was actually higher than what we had budgeted. And just so you know, uh, in an effort, um, emails are sent out weekly. So it is an automatic when somebody goes into a deficit, an email is, is sent out um, at, at each week notifying parents of a deficit account. When they get into a large balance, then personal phone calls are also made. Um, but again, we need to, by law, to fund, uh, the, reimburse the revolving account for those deficit accounts. Okay. In that case, uh, absent any questions, I would seek a motion to approve the transfer uh, from the operating budget expense to the school lunch revolving account. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call with Meg. Aye. Aye. Yes. I'm a yes. And Mina? Aye. Okay. So that so carries. And that moves us then into the approval of expense transfers. You're really on a roll here. Uh, actually, um, school, school lunch, lunch. staff. Mm. Did I, I jumped over? Jumped oh, thank one. you. Yes. <laughs> so next year, in an effort to basically lessen the number of kids that are in each lunch period, uh, most of the schools are actually adding a lunch period. Um, but in addition, so there will be four lunches. Right now there's three. When they're adding it, they're not extending that period of time, what they're doing is taking away the time in between lunches. So that makes it a real crunch for staff to be prepared for that next lunch. Um, and we're in an effort to do more batch cooking. So that means that at nine o'clock in the morning, all the food is not ready that is gonna be served all the way until one o'clock. So you're cooking as you go along. Um, so as you're adding lunch periods and squeezing the time, um, the addition of staff is is needed um, in order to implement and really keep the the food going and the kids going throughout so you can see with um, some of the positions what we're doing is really just increasing their time a little bit and what it will be is it will be an up to um, so in some um, kitchens you may not need that full amount of time but this gives them the flexibility that, you know, with the crunch of students, if they do need that time, we can hire the general workers up to the 3.95, the managers up to the 6.5, and the uh, secondary managers up to the eight hours. Um, in addition, there is a new general worker position needed pretty much at every school. And then the addition of a clerk um, but also eliminating a float position, which is what we did put in place this year earlier that was brought to the school committee. So the total changes adds up to 2.8 FTEs for approximately $51,000. And this would be paid for out of the lunch revolving account. Okay. Questions on that? Th thank you for to the staff for looking at um, this problem and adding the lunches. I think this makes a big difference to the students during the day that they have time to eat and that they can, um, you know, get through the line. And adding a lunch where necessary, I think will definitely help that. So, yeah. well, adding the lunch is really a principal decision. Yeah. So that that's that's <laughs> not a. <laughs> no, I know, but I mean, this lunch, this supports that activity. To facilitate that. That's yeah. Correct. If we didn't do this, that would that wouldn't be able to be feasible. So it's all one bundle. So I think it's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. I also, I think it's great that the way that you have brought in the new way of doing food services in the past year has increased demand. I think that speaks highly of the program itself. So, so not every school is doing this, you said, necessarily. 
I I think at the last um, that I saw, they all are. Oh, they all are. Okay. Yes. Okay. Some waited until the very last minute. So. I just think Hopkins may not be. Hopkins might be the one school that is not doing that. I think high school, middle school, Elmwood, and Marathon will all have four lunches. Yeah, middle school always had four lunches. Yes. Okay. I had asked, and I, just so people know, I mean, I asked if the actual eating time per student would decrease to accommodate this, and I, we were told no. It's Correct. the passing Which time or yes. the transition time that's been cut. Yeah. So they already eat pretty quickly. They don't have to eat any faster. It's it's yes. staying the same. And actually increasing in one school, I think. Elmwood. Elmwood has increased. have more time to eat, yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. And tell about the kiosk. So what, uh, <laughs> I think this is great. <laughs> Maybe I'm, I'm overzealous about it. I don't know. Well, what we have been doing is really, you know, looking at all of our equipment and that not just in the kitchen, but district wide and, mm -hmm. you know, making those decisions of repair versus replace. Um, so in each of the kitchens, they will all now have a steamer unit, which is a, a unit that only right now the marathon has because it's a brand new kitchen. Um, so it helps to facilitate, so you have an oven, you have a cooktop, uh, and now you have a steamer. So it helps to facilitate and cook food faster. Um, so that's one thing that will happen. A uh, couple of schools also got new warming units. So as you um, are batch cooking the food, you now have a warming unit that's right there at the line. So all of this will facilitate being able to keep the line and, and stock and move it faster. Um, in addition, what we're doing at the high school is we're putting in place a kiosk which will have the grab-and-go items and that will be on the opposite side of the where you walk into the kitchen. So it'll be in the cafeteria but over on the opposite side again to kind of spread the kids. Um, so the kids that are just looking for that grab-and-go can go to the kiosk and um, you know, great. Yeah. move and, and be on their yeah. way. Yeah. So yeah. all really in an effort to, you know, get our equipment up to speed, what it needs to be to fill the lines, to cook more efficiently, um, you know, and do the best to move the kids through the lines. Okay, that's great. That's great. Okay. All right, then are we See, ready for a motion? motion. <laughs> <laughs> Very, <Just me. laughs> you know, again, it goes to the staffing. So if you yes. put a kiosk, you need staff. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. okay. Are we ready for a motion to approve uh, the additional school lunch staff request as outlined in the memorandum? So moved. Second. Okay, so roll call starting with Meg. Aye. Aye. Yes. I am a yes. And Mina? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Then that uh, brings us into the approval of expense transfers. Uh, so the approval of the expense transfers we spoke a little bit about uh, with the final um, financial report uh, in the very beginning of the meeting. <laughs> and again, just to um, lessen our use of the building use revolving and lessen our years use of the circuit breaker. And again, that sets us up financially to um, for future budgets. Great. Questions? Okay, then I would seek a motion to approve the expense transfer requests as outlined for FY19. So moved. Second. And roll call. Aye. Aye. Yes. I'm a yes. Mina? Yes. Okay. That's great. And that moves us into approval for rooftop solar site agreement. Um, so again, back in January, we had spoken about uh, potential alternative energy uh, opportunities mm -hmm. for the district. Um, so one of the contracts, which would be the uh, PPA for the Marathon School, um, what you need legally is this site access agreement. Um, the vendor would be coming and installing the solar equipment, but it is not equipment that becomes the property of Hopkinton Public Schools. They retain ownership of that. So in order for them to do that, which is different than a vendor coming and putting in um, a piece of equipment that then becomes the property of, of the Hopkinton Public Schools, um, so in order for them to do that, legally, this is a, a document that um, the attorney drew up, which is this access agreement, which would allow them to do that. Any questions? Okay, then I would seek a mo motion to approve the Director of Finance the authority to execute the rooftop solar site access agreement. So moved. Second. 
Second and a roll call starting with Meg. Aye. Aye. Yes. I'm a yes. Mina? Yes. Okay. And that so carries. And we are we had agreed that we were gonna move come back to the school committee norms. We've already done the uh, old business A, B, and C. So that brings us into old business D, which is policy B, E, H, D, public participation at school committee meetings. And that's on for you, Dr. Pepper. Okay. So I know that we had talked about this um, last time. And the one concern that people had, I think, with policy B, E, D, H, as it was written, is that um, in sort of copying verbatim Natick's policy, which did come recommend, recommended to us um, through ACLU and MASS. Uh, one of the things that they have in their policy was that there would be a sign-up sheet uh, kind of giving people an order in which they would present and then also a limitation to the number of people who could present because they had sort of capped their public speak at 15 minutes. So the iteration that you see in front of us really is just the, that iteration with the removal of the sign-up sheet, but with everything else pretty much looking the same. And we did receive, I think we all received community feedback with support of that. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yep. So any other comments or questions? Yeah. I guess I just want to, was someone saying something? No. Nope. I didn't hear. I okay. think it's you. Um, I, I guess, uh, you know, I appreciate the feedback that we received and uh, uh, from the chair of the Youth Commission around uh, the sign up sheet. Uh, I think that was very valid. Uh, uh, I just want to reiterate the fact that what we are trying to do here is to ensure that we are able to conduct the school committee business as has been outlined um, and that the public comment section we just want to ensure that it's uh, you know time is set and there is a process in place of course if there is an issue of concerns concern for the community we should look for ways to bring it into the school committee agenda and consideration in an appropriate manner so this is in no way an attempt to uh, you know suppress voices or to cut down conversations at all uh, you know based on the topic that comes up that concerns the community it might be something that comes on the agenda it could end up with some kind of a forum that we think of so all of those options will continue to remain Great. Great. Thank you. So I would then seek a motion, right? Let me just make sure I have the wording right here. Uh, a, I think we are ready for a motion on this. Is that people ready to move this? Yep. I feel good. Okay. Yeah. Then I would seek a motion to approve policy BEHD, public participation at school committee meetings, as outlined in the agenda. So moved. B E D H. Just oh, it says it says B E H D on the um, agenda. So that should be. We should well, let's check it. Maybe I'm wrong. Is it Find B it fast. That there you go. <laughs> Make sure we use B E D H. The title B at the top. B E D H is the correct title. Yeah, I it's think in it's the packet. Just a typo in the packet. I think it is too. All right. So a motion to. Do you want to? Double check that just to be sure. I, I, I think it is B E D H. I okay. did find it fast. On my new I like find it fast. All right, then I would see <laughs> a motion to approve policy B E D H public participation at school committee meetings as outlined in our agenda. So moved. Second. And roll call. Aye. Aye. Yes. I'm a yes. And Mina? Mina on policy B E D H. Yes. Okay, so that so yes. carries. Uh, and then. Okay moves us into um, item E, which is IJOA field trips for a second reading, Dr. Kaplan. Yes, we also looked at this last time we were together. Um, I think that the only substantial change to IJOA um, in category two, we have included athletic, steam, music, art, and club trips. And then we have also added on the second page, uh, a number six and a number seven. Uh, the previous 
uh, policy used to stop at number five, evidence of thoroughness and planning. So what we've done is we've added the existence of a clearly defined emergency communication plan related to both individuals, student emergencies and emergency changes to the trip itinerary in general, and then the potential impact on student attendance at schools. So for example, if a field trip, an international field trip is coming back on a Sunday night or they're leaving on a Friday morning, um, that would obviously impact kids uh, being in school on Friday or Monday. Um, and then the next last paragraph at the bottom of the page also sort of spells that out. For any field trip, there must be a documented emergency communication plan and so forth. So those, I think, are the two significant changes to that policy. Um, there's also just a little introductory line, I think, on the front that says this policy defines three categories. But other than that, it's... Okay. Any questions or comments? Okay, I think this one then, if we didn't receive any feedback on this uh, through the public, I know it was shared. Mm -hmm. No feed. Mina, did you receive any feedback on this? No, I did not. And Dr. Kavanaugh, the people who actually chaperone trips regularly felt comfortable, right, with these Yes, changes. I think so. Okay. Yep. okay. Then I guess I would seek a motion to approve policy IJOA field trips as outlined in the uh, agenda packet. So moved. Second. And a roll call starting with you, Meg. Aye. Aye. Yes. I'm a yes. And Mina? Yes. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. That moves us down. Uh, we actually have managed to catch up very nicely here. Uh, if we want to have any future agenda items, if there are any things that people would like us to consider bringing up on future agendas. I think that we need. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Mina. Mina? Did I, um, yeah, I just wanted to say that um, this was something that Nancy had introduced last year and we had played with that a little bit and I think um, in our discussion at the last meeting uh, there was a request to bring this back and um, Nancy very thoughtfully suggested we do that. So that's the reason for this. Um, the way we will go about it is if, if whatever suggestions that come up through the school committee members or any community members who may have reached out to you. We'll put that on the docket. Um, we'll try and figure out a way to manage that list um, and work with Dr. Cavanaugh because some of the agenda items based on the request may take some time and we'll mm -hmm. have to figure out how to fit it into the year-long agenda. And that's another aspect uh, that we're hoping to discuss with Dr. Cavanaugh. How can we um, look at an agenda planner that lays out uh, the plan for the entire year? And uh, as we have seen, some items may come to us which may not be under the purview of the school committee, in mm -hmm. which case we can come back and say, we cannot add it to the agenda because of this reason. But any and every suggestion on uh, what folks want to hear or talk about are welcome. Yeah, it's it, it just that we're, we will need um, probably to have a, a vote on some content for our website. Okay. Um, and that could be like September, any, any time between August and yep. October, I think is a reasonable for school committee website. Yep. For the school committee. I know there's, um, Meg and Mina probably have some stuff that's been waiting in the wings, and then we have some actual a few issues with our portion of the site. Yeah. So at some point I'd like to get like probably 15 minutes or so. Oh, thank you. Um, I have uh, one request um, which is related to differentiation. Uh, I'd like us to come back with some information on the differentiation uh, that is offered in the classrooms in our district um, and any further supports that are needed and how those methods are serving our learners. So looking for a report, is that what you're asking? Yes. Yes, and I think all of those things will require some time and work with um, Dr. Kavanaugh and whoever she recommends we work with. Okay. Okay, and then we will also have the three that we did not get to today, which is the school committee norms, the school committee meeting calendar, and the school committee liaison roles to bring back. Right. Okay. And um, and as, I, oops, sorry. As Go we ahead, bring please. back the calendar, if there's just one, um, and maybe this will just be for ease next time, uh, if there's one thing to think about, October, it looks like we have meeting dates on the 3rd and the 17th, and then there are 
no meetings on the 24th, 31st, 7th, and then we get to the 14th. The 28th is actually Thanksgiving, so I, and, and I guess I would, we would probably try to avoid the 31st because it's Halloween, so I didn't know if maybe the... Are you suggesting you don't want to meet on Thanksgiving? <laughs> <laughs> so, Dr. Cavanaugh. Um, I'll do what everybody else wants. Uh, just July uh, to uh, September are the ones which are confirmed. I think the oh, rest okay. require a sure. book. Okay. I just wanted to be conscious uh, yeah, we about can, we, we do want to try to move those dates that we know we can do. suggestions in that <laughs> time frame, but happy to take on other thoughts. So should we just discuss that since we're talking about it? Sure. Do we want to do that, sure. or should we just hold sure. off yeah, for we, next time? We did catch up to some of the time we lost. We could have that, a start right? of the conversation. All right. So to that point, we could shift the dates in October from the yeah. 3rd and the 17th to the 10th and the 24th. Just take those two Thursdays and go later. It, and shift them by one week, if, you, if that's agreeable. Yeah. Okay. okay, so we're looking at the calendar now. So we're back to, is that right, Nancy? Yes, so we're back to the calendar. And we were, do you want to start with something particular that you want to say? Um, I just want to say that uh, if we look at the calendar, we had discussed this um, at our last meeting. Mm -hmm. And the thought process was to have those three categories. There was feedback that was received that probably we should have more uh, office hours. There were some discussions about, you know, uh, going back to folks to confirm some of the dates, etc. So Nancy and I actually looked at this together. We added um, two um, office hours. One is um, coming up next month, um, tied with the farmer's market. And then in September tied, um, we thought possibly going to the spoon as an option uh, for office hours. So those were the two office hours that came up. We shifted the dates um, as requested by Dr. Kavanaugh to accommodate Ms. Parson and, and I think Nancy had also requested. And anyhow, that was our schedule uh, from the beginning. So shifted those back to the appropriate Thursdays. Uh, besides that, as I shared, you know, uh, the information on this self-paced learning, it's more happening through um, some dissemination of details that I am receiving at this point in time. There isn't really um, any module that's readily available. If I find something, I'll be happy to share, but I encourage each one of you, I'm sure you read material, um, if you want to share something, around any of those topics, that would be helpful. The other thing we did was the training related to visions. It doesn't look like it's going to happen in September. Um, so it likely happened in October. So we shifted that out. So those were the major changes really. So the first three months are confirmed. Uh, the next set of um, you know dates as they get finalized, we will confirm that in terms of dates and timings. But I think the bigger part is attaching the agenda planner and tying that to the calendar. Now, one thing that is coming to my mind now is that we have our next meeting scheduled for August 15th. Um, given the fact that we'll be going over school improvement plans, and I'm sure there's some other items that will come up, we are talking about um, school committee goal setting, norms, and um, you know also the liaison roles. I'm wondering if we would need to look at the timing if we had to extend that. Perhaps uh, uh, Nancy and I will reach out to all of you to see if we can either extend that meeting or uh, do we go for an additional session. But besides that, the calendar of the next, um, you know, for this first quarter is in front of you. If there are any thoughts and suggestions that we should consider, uh, please let us know. Well, shouldn't we switcheroo the October dates now? Because if yeah, we wait yeah, till August, yeah, yeah. that gets a little yeah. messy. Yeah. Yeah, I thought for expediency, it would be good to just go ahead yeah. and do that. Yeah. So to the so 10th and 24th of October. And then there would only be one November meeting on the 14th. Um, so so I, I'll take feedback on the rest of the dates. Um, 
happily but um, you know i wouldn't want you to focus too much on that portion because that hasn't gone through the next iteration except that we do want to put that up on our the calendar for the public to know if we're going to change our meetings oh absolutely absolutely yeah no there are corrections to be made based on our feedback from even the last session um, we talked about a bunch of options what are the possible places uh, where we could um, have the office hours how can we ensure that um, all the uh, events that we attend are uh, you know uh, going to all the schools, all student interests, that we are going to a drama event, we're possibly going to a musical event. We were thinking about um, the Friends of CPAC bingo night. You know, these are the bunch of things that we talked about as making sure that there is a presence and um, the school committee makes an effort to uh, show support. So what's the what's the goal of the calendar that we have in front of us right now, Mina? Are we looking for specific meeting dates and trainings, or is there more to it than what you're saying? There's more to it. Um, so to me, the first step is to be able to see what's our commitment for the year in terms of not just the meetings, but all these other events, office hours, etc. Right, that, that's the first step. And kind of be thoughtful in signing up for all these programs and that they're not necessarily happening ad hoc, but we're actually putting some thought behind what is it that we want to make sure we're there. So that's the first step. Which, pro can I just step, ask, sorry, uh, which programs, Mina? I beg your pardon. When you say programs, what do you what do you mean by programs? Um, I mean I mean events. So we were talking about, um, you know, we haven't really gone to many events. For instance, in Hopkins, should we identify uh, a Hopkins event because that's a way for us to be part of the get into the community, make sure we are around um, to hear, to participate, to support. Maybe we need. Does to... that make sense, Jen? Yeah, oh, I I understand what you're saying now. Yep. Go ahead. Really did, um, did, and, Mina, and have you? Second, sorry. Have you have you asked um, like the Hopkins principal or each each of the principals what they think would be an ideal representative event for us to attend? Mm -hmm. um, we haven't gone to that step yet, um, Amanda. Uh, again, Nancy and I talked about this a little bit that the uh, you know September is a busy time, mm -hmm. so there may not be too many school events necessarily that we can attend we talked about the popsicles on the playground um, but they were just those events but in the upcoming months we're hoping to go through dr kavanaugh and figure out what those events could be okay so i i thought we were talking about the ice cream social not the popsicles on the playground yes i'm sorry but no i just Thank I, you. I that's so sorry. just Nancy, want to make sure i have my dates right, right. <laughs> i do but, but I, i'm not sure well i'm not sure if the because the popsicles in the playground are specific for orientation events for right, students right, i right. didn't know right right whereas the right. people coming into the district for the other event i think there's a sorbet event too i want that one <laughs> and if there's anything that has hot fudge i am on that so what are we looking at today for the calendar then like what it's on the agenda but i guess i I don't have a clear understanding of what we're doing with it. So all we're doing um, is to just share that these are the things we are planning for in the in this first quarter of this new year, the new school year, and for everyone to be aware that you know we may have the Y Advocacy Day that you may want to attend. Um, you know, uh, please make time to be part uh, participate in the office hours um, in August and September. So it's kind of a, a you know, just looking ahead what the calendar looks like. That's all it really is. So just bringing an update back um, and hopefully we'll have a home for it on the new website in the upcoming weeks, months. Yeah. And once that happens, the updates will happen um, right on the calendar. So, um, and the second part of this, Jen, is tying the agenda planner to the meetings the meeting dates, the school committee meeting dates, which are color-coded. And the agenda planner is like the big 
higher level stuff like when budget meetings happen is that what you mean when you say Jennifer? Um, I think we need to discuss that a little bit with Dr. Kavanaugh. Georgette had shared something very detailed. Um, uh, I've seen some from other districts how their planners are. Uh, I have some thoughts but I would certainly want to discuss with Dr. Kavanaugh as well before uh, we bring it back to the entire committee because it's um, you know items that come through Dr. Kavanaugh's office like you said, the budget items. We know that budget happens from this time to this time. We know there will be some joint um, board, uh, select board meetings, right, and appropriations committee. So things of that nature, uh, but also key decisions that we want to, that will be coming up. So being aware of it, knowing that, you know, uh, for instance, uh, that's probably not planned for this year, but let's say transportation, um, or um, after school program contracts, things of that nature. If we highlight it beforehand, the community is also aware that these are things that come up at this time of the year. So, so that would be part two. So quickly, is, time that you can is August 11th a date that would work for other people for office hours? I don't want to do that. Okay. I'm away August 11th. I think I'm okay. I just have a comment on the October shift. I just no, not that it. I mean, don't change anything. But I am personally not available to do visions training that weekend. We don't have a date for the visions training. Oh, it's a twenty third to twenty seventh. Okay, so I it the visions training we're waiting on the trainer, and it's actually only a one day event anyway. It okay. with like a follow up with like a couple of hours long, and like a month afterwards. Okay. I have a family wedding. The 24th and 25th, I'll be busy. It's a Friday wedding. Very nice. I don't know. I. So, yeah, I mean, if the, if the meeting gets changed, it wouldn't be a, that big of a deal, right? Because, I mean. I just missed one meeting, yeah. You wouldn't be, yeah. Oh, so you're talking about, you're talking about the, I'm talking not about the vision stretch. Little, about, okay, so stretch. The, I'm usually around. I don't have much going on in my life. But that particular weekend, <laughs> I have a wedding, so. The visions training doesn't have a date that would be, it but could certainly steer away from that okay. date as we get it nailed down. But in terms of this, so you would not be at the October 24th school program. Likely yet. not, yeah. That's okay. Right. Are we ready to? I guess, yeah. The only other comment I had, Mina, going back to the self-paced training and the um, idea of sharing um, training content, I just, I, I'm weird about email and I like to be able to figure out what bucket it goes in when it comes in. So I'm wondering if people could preface the subject with self-paced training, just so that when it comes out, I can connect it with these like peach-colored dots on the calendar. And it's kind of weird, but no, that's at idea. least can help that's, me yeah. put it into its own folder or bucket or something, so I, I can think of it in that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good for me. All right, I think we're maybe starting to. Okay. Our brains are getting at least. I'll speak for myself. My yeah. brain is starting to to wind down here. So do we want to move into um, items by consensus? Definitely. Sure. Sure thing. So as superintendent, I recommend that you approve the items by consensus as outlined in the agenda. So moved. Second. Okay, we'll do a roll call. Aye. Aye. Yes. Yes. Mina? Yes. Okay, so that's so moved. And that moves us down into looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Uh, do roll call. Aye. Aye. Yes. Emma, yes. Mina? Aye. So we are adjourned at 121, and our next meeting that we have scheduled is August 15th, 2019, at 10 a.m. here in the HCAM studios. Thank you very much for all who tuned in, and enjoy the summer.